City Radio Scotland. It is Rangers against Celtic. More to come later from Tom English. Right now, commentary from Pat Bonner, Stuart McCall and Liam McLeod. High noon in Glasgow. The biggest game of the Premiership season as far as the title race is concerned. This is massive. The managers won't admit to that at this stage. But a win for either of these rivals today will go a long way to deciding who's going to be hoisting the silverware next month as we hit the home straight in season 23-24. Cameron Carter, Vickers and James Tavernier are the two skippers today. Callum McGregor is back in the matchday squad, but he's not fit to start. That's something the Celtic supporters were dearly hoping would come to pass. The Celtic players go into their huddle. The sun breaks out from the skies above Ibrox. Celtic have won both of these this season. As they look for a hat trick for the first time in a couple of decades, that one of these sides has won the first three derbies in this fixture. Butland in goal for Rangers, Tavernier, Goldson, Suter, Sterling, Lundstrom, Diamande, Wright, Lawrence, Silva and Dessers for Celtic, Hart in goal, Johnston, Carter, Bicker, Scales and Taylor, O'Reilly, Iwata, Hitate, Kuhn and Maida and Kyogo. Those are the lineups. The referee's John Beaton. It's his sixth old firm game and he gets the match underway. Rangers in their blue shirts, white shorts, right to left shooting towards Broomlawn Road. Celtic in the green and white hoops, left to right towards Copeland Road, and it's Celtic who pinches it back after Rangers took centre, and Carter Vicker slips it back to Joe Hart, he comes outside his box and launches it forward, and Maida is trying to hunt that down there, it's in, Celtic in front, 22 seconds of the clock, he was charged down and it bounces back off Maida, and it ends up in the bottom right corner of the net, an absolutely incredible goal, which just about stuns Ibrox into silence. Tavernier boots it off Maida, and somehow it ends up in the back of the net with one of, if not the, quickest goals in this long history of this fixture. It is Rangers nil, Celtic one. Absolutely incredible. And the champions hit the front. Well, quite incredible. And listen, Tavernier went to sleep a little bit. He, he didn't realise that Maeda, who is really, really quick, was getting in to close him down. And I think he played it off him, didn't he? And the goalkeeper obviously was out of position because he was waiting for the fullback. But the hesitation from James Tavernier, and it was just a ball played beyond him, and he should have been on to it quick. And these games especially, and when you're up against a, a player like Maeda, who will close you down, he's got to do better. Yeah, it's a complete three. Tavernier should have reacted earlier, but um, he obviously never made it. As he said, he'll close every ball down. And um, it's a fantastic start for Celtic. Now, an incredible start for Celtic. Rangers will be absolutely stunned by that. And it was their so reliable skipper who, as Packy was saying, I think the wind's caught it as well. The gusts have continued from yesterday's weather warning. Really blustery conditions. And that hasn't helped out Tavernier there, but Maida is so lively, you cannot fall asleep with Eisen. Maida's around and he's onto it again. Hatate whipping it out to his compatriot. Maida taking on Tavernier, stumbling a little bit under pressure from Diamande. Back to Taylor and to Maida. It is the dream start for Brendan Rodgers. As Hatate bends the ball in, he's off target with the cross and it sails behind for the goal kick. But it is Celtic with a sensational lead here in Govan. There's no doubt that the one caught, I think, the first ball from Joe Hartley. It was just a ball played through. But that's when you've got to be on your toes. That's when you've got to go after the ball and deal with it very, very quickly. And especially, you know that Maeda's got that pace, that power, and, and he will close you down at all costs. And that's where he made the mistake. To John Sterling for Rangers, out to the left-hand side of the Celtic half here, lunged to midway inside it. He wanted Silva to go ahead of him. He didn't, though. Misunderstanding is to go back to Sterling. And now it's Lundstrom. Infield to Sterling, back to Lundstrom on this near side touchline. Looks up left football into the penalty area as a couple of players slip, including Dessers inside the box and Celtic able to clear. Suter to Goldson. Right footed ball out to the far side. Look at for Tavern. He'll be keen to redeem himself. And he's won the throw in off Maida, level with the Celtic penalty spot over on that right hand side. 
Tavernier looking for a quick option. It's not coming. Here the Rangers supporters unrest already in the game. With Celtic, if you're just joining us, leading through Dyson Maida. Scored here before, scored early here before is Maida. As that ball comes all the way through back to Joe Hart. The blue ticker tape and paper still rustling around the pitch down below us. And as Carter Vickers slips it forward to O'Reilly. And back to Joe Hart. How do Rangers react to this, Stuart? Because this wasn't in their script. No, it certainly wasn't. I mean, listen, Tavernier could do that another nine times out of ten, and you know he got caught on the ball, but and Scales has been caught on yeah. the ball, and then he fouls Tom Lawrence. John Beaton signals for a free kick to Rangers over on that right-hand side. A little bit sloppy from Liam Scales. There, he's in a good season. One of his best performances this season. He really announced himself as a Celtic player. Was here in the meeting at the start of September. But Packy, that's a nervy moment for him. Yeah, he's got to move the ball quicker. You know, don't get caught on it. The conditions may have a have a have a have a role to play even in that situation. Where, and the ball's flat on the ground. But certainly, he's got to move the ball quicker because he knows in this game you're going to be closed down at every opportunity from both sets of players. James Tavernier stands over this free kick. Rangers looking for a quick fire equaliser here. Still not played five minutes. Celtic in front. Tavernier sizing up the Celtic penalty area here. A throng of players along the 18. Tavernier now with the right foot. It's the free kick into the box. It's too close to Joe Hart, who holds on. And it remains Rangers nil. Celtic won. Today, Celtic win. And we'll put them to a four point lead at the top of the table. Rangers would still have that game in hand to come at Dens. On Wednesdays, Kyogo picks it up and rifles it forward down the left-hand side, looking for Maida. It's going to go all the way through, though, for a goal kick to Rangers. And, of course, a Rangers win today would give them the opportunity to go five clear if they can beat Dundee as well on Wednesday. And that would also, if Rangers win this one, take it out of Celtic's hands for the first time in a few years. As Sterling rolls it forward to Silva, under pressure from Johnston. Infield to Diamande, midway inside his own half, scoops it out to the right-hand side for Tavernier. With a space to run into, being closed down rapidly by Maida. Tavernier skips infield, though, to a more right-central position to Diamande. Now it's Lundstrom. Lundstrom trying to hold off O'Reilly. He's found Sterling on this near side. Fouled there by Nicholas Kuhn. Free kick Rangers, a bit level with the edge of the centre circle on this near side in front of Brendan Rodgers, and nobody has a better winning percentage in this fixture as a manager than Brendan Rodgers does. Goldson picks it up on the halfway line, out to Scott Wright on that far side. Back to Goldson, and he slips it in field to Suter, and then to Lundstrom. Right football out to Sterling, first time back to John Lundstrom again, he's seeing a lot of the ball at the moment, Lundstrom fires it forward, underneath it with a header away is Taylor. Now it's O'Reilly to Hitati, tries to volley it out to Kuhn on this near side, but it goes out for a throw-in to Rangers, and it remains Rangers nil, Celtic one, six and a half in. Philippe Clement down there talking to do John Sterling. Not much they could do about the goal, Stuart, I guess, at the end of the day. Tavernier, a little bit slouchy, but it's a complete freak, as you said. Yeah, I think it was. He could have reacted quicker, but... You know, he does that again another nine times out of ten, as I say, and it won't probably fly back into the goal. But you can see Celtic are trying to put a high press on, even from the back line. I think the ball over the top from Dessers, although it's windy conditions, might be the one that Rangers look for. Here he is. Dessers sending it goal side of Scales, sticks with him. Scales does his job. Picked up by Carter Vickers in the 18, coolly. Turns it out to Johnston and then rolls it down the line for Kuhn. Kuhn's got a bit of space here. Being closed down by Suter. Kuhn steps away from Suter and Lundstrom and then goes down, but it's a foul by him. And it will be a free kick to Rangers for... Uh, trip there by Kuhn on Suter and Rangers get the game underway again in double quick time here's Silva picking it up from Sterling on the near side pinched off him by Johnston though now O'Reilly to Johnston to Hatate to O'Reilly and he plays it off Lundstrom and out for a Celtic throw in on this near side applause from Rodgers down below us yeah it certainly sits, it goes into Celtic's favour now getting the early goal Rangers have got to come push forward and obviously on the counter attack Celtic very dangerous the team that scores first in this fixture has only lost it four times out of the last 46. Did happen a couple of times two seasons ago. One of them here when Aaron Ramsey gave Rangers the lead, Celtic 1-2-1, and then in the Scottish Cup semi-final that season, Greg Taylor opened for Celtic, only for them to lose 2-1 after extra time. And then another couple of examples of it, over 46 meetings between these two. So Celtic... 
And in prime position here at Ibrox, 1-0 up as Wright tries to get on to it the far side. Scales goes in on the challenge, the ref's happy with it. The Rangers fans aren't this Tavernier. Then brings down Taylor and then Maida brings down Diamonde. And as you would expect, the blue touch paper has been lit early on here at Ibrox. Rangers nil, Celtic one, eight and a half on the clock. Yeah, I think the Rangers fans were looking for a foul on Scott Wright with Liam Scales. I didn't see too much. I thought it was a really good tackle from Liam Scales. He's got the ball, he's come out with it, uh, and uh, obviously he may have caught the player, but I think the tackle was really good. And, and you know, listen, there is sliding tackles in this game it's still part uh, part of the game they're trying to almost do away with them uh, Stuart yeah, I think in tackle. your day would have been no a great tackle a good tackle you see how high how the line is now Paki this is when Rangers need to try. Wright's pace could be crucial in the game getting in behind Taylor that's what they have to look for Celtic are so high that's the spaces in behind them yeah if you also look at midfield you've got Tom Lawrence sitting in that whole bit what it doesn't, you know, between himself and Tati and O'Reilly, they're trying to push on and, and on to Lundstrom and on to Diamondi in middle of the pitch and stop it. And Iwata will step out and try and press one of the, the centre backs when they step forward. So Tom Lawrence is always he's, he's, on the ball Lawrence. Now. he's got it through to Silva, scales with the challenge, Silva goes down and he's patting the turf as if he's in pain here. Fabio Silva, he stayed down. Celtic have it on the far side. They're allowed to continue. This isn't a head knock, so it's at the referee's discretion. As Taylor knocks it back into his own box for Scales, he goes back to Hart. Silva still down on the deck, writhing in pain, and John Beaton does eventually stop play to allow attention to the Portuguese. 10 in, Rangers nil, Celtic one. It wasn't quite the quickest old firm goal. That was scored by Chris Sutton in 2002. That was 19 seconds. Today's one for Maida came on 22. It was his ninth of the season. Yeah, I'm just looking at that also, Stuart, in your day. That, 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 that would be just a normal tackle. That, that embarrasses me, packing. I want to watch football everywhere across the countries. Hitting the ground as if he's broke his leg. It happens all over. Every team does it. It's embarrassing that you, sh you show it and then you're up and running. Just get up, get on with the game. He's trying to get the game stopped, isn't he? He's out of possession. His heart clips it up to halfway. Suter wins the header. Dessers chasing Carter Vickers. He was pretty sure he was... That was under control. He sees it back and out for the goal kick in any case. And it will be Joe Hart to take. It's certainly changing our day, Paki. I remember you used to say to your kids, do not ever let your opponent know that you're hurt. Oh, well, a lovely flick from Maida. Now it's Iwata trying to nick it through towards Kyogo, but misunderstanding between the two of them, and Goldson has it. Goes back to Jack Butland, whose clearance is charged down by Kyogo. It breaks favourably for Rangers, though, to Sterling, who whips it up towards the halfway line. Taylor beats right in the jump. And breaks Suter's weight. And Lundstrom's header back to John Suter. It doesn't feel as though this game's settled at this stage. I don't think it will settle because of the conditions also, you know. Yeah. It, it, the wind, we're sitting up here in a stand and we're getting blown around a little bit and it's very swirly down on that pitch and it's causing problems for the players so they have to be really, really sure when the ball comes in now they've got real concentration levels. Lundstrom out to Sterling on this near side. Uh, free kick, another moment for Fabio Silva as he was brought to the ground, it's Goldson was inside his own half this time, no Goldson goes back to Butland, first time ball low out to Tavernier on the far side he's driven that ball forward but Carter Vickers cuts it out, prevents it getting through to Dessers, now it's Rio Hitate slipping it with the right foot to the left hand side of the box, my that's an early ball, Kyogo's not going to get there though, it's the right idea from Celtic and it's the three Japanese players who have often impressed in this fixture. Hitate to Maida to Kyogo. He couldn't quite get in the end of it along the six-yard line. And it stays Rangers nil, Celtic one. There's no doubt my head will fancy himself up against Tavernier down that side. Celtic have tried to play it down there a few times. Rangers on the ball here with John Lundstrom. Long ball forward. Silva chasing after it. Johnston and he's facing his own goal line there and he does well just to knock it out for the goal kick rather than the corner and Lawrence takes the short throw in quickly to Silva back to Tom Lawrence level with the Celtic penalty spot out muscled by Johnston though Celtic clear and now it's Suter he's given it away to Hitate who plays it forward it bounces off Suter and out for a Celtic throw in out on this near side the champions leading the challengers 1-0 here 13 minutes played Dyson Maida outdoing 
his exploits on the 2nd of January here last year when he scored inside five minutes. Scoring inside 22 seconds this afternoon to give Celtic this priceless lead that they have. We'll throw it up the line by Johnston, cut out by Sterling, bouncing ball in the midfield, Hatate back to Iwata, to Hatate, sliding in Diamonde, wins the ball back well, now it's right to Diamonde, back to Tavernier, and then back to Golson, who squares it to Suter. Again, the wind swirling around Ibrox as Suter scoops it out to the right-hand side. Can't find Tavernier, though. And it's out for a throw into Celtic on the far side. And a little bit edgy Rangers right now. Yeah, Celtic give him no time in the back, and Golson gets it, Suter gets it, pressing high. But the key is, if you can have a bit of composure, it's difficult in conditions. Can you find Lawrence, who's just in behind the, the Celtic midfield, or the other side, he's got to go over the top for right. Tavernier infield to Lundstrom and then goes back to Suter at the edge of his own box to Goldson back to Butland Celtic putting the pressure on Maida chasing it down Butland clearing with the right foot into the Celtic half Taylor again wins the header against right heads it down the left hand touchline Diamonde finds Tavernier now Goldson to Lundstrom O'Reilly all over him back to Goldson oh he's under pressure he's gone down he's wanting a free kick he picked the ball up as if he was always going to get it and that's Fortunate for him that John Beaton thought, thought it was a foul. Yeah, it was a foul, I think. He just caught him and that. He's lucky, actually, John Suter, because, again, that hesitation, ball comes here, trying to get it under control. The conditions is really causing problems for the players, but you've got to be sure-footed, you've got to be quick, you've got to be sharp, because Celtic are really putting Rangers under pressure and they know that... Uh, the Japanese players, of course, that's right yeah. up their street. Your Silva picking up inside the Celtic box from a long ball. Celtic defence didn't deal with it very well initially. As Kuhn picks it up and knocks it off Sterling. And out for a Celtic throw-in. Level with their own 18 on this near side. And it will be taken by Alistair Johnston. And Kuhn just taking his time to tie his laces on his left boot there. To the annoyance of the Rangers fans, it's just taken a little bit of the sting out of the situation just now because although Celtic have the lead neither team's been able to settle and stroke the ball around as they would like as Johnston eventually takes the throw and finds Kyogo knocks it off Suter who's been chasing after him but Lundstrom picks up the scraps off O'Reilly left hand side of the box pulls it back straight to Iwata though and O'Reilly on the slide can clear from the edge of his penalty box down goes Sterling fouled by Kuhn quick free kick taken to Lundstrom O'Reilly trying to win it back it's broken Tom Lawrence's way but it's well dealt with by Tomoki Iwata on this near side and he plays it out for a throw in off his Rangers opposite number for a Celtic throw on this near main stand side to be taken by Alistair Johnston. It is Rangers nil, Celtic one, here live in Sunday Sports Sound. And it is Johnston bowling it forward to Kyogo. Heavy touch, though. Allows Silva to get onto it, but he gives it away immediately, and it's not forward by Kyogo. Couldn't find Kuhn right through to Butlin, and it stays 1-0 Celtic. There's an opportunity for, for him just to slide the ball past uh, uh, Sterling for, for Kuhn. Another loose overhead. ball, this time Tavernier. Rangers be in trouble here, it's Iwata, square to O'Reilly. O'Reilly drifting out to this right-hand side, passes it short to Kuhn at the right angle of the box, now he's charging along the 18-yard line. Left foot effort blocked by Sterling, and out for a throw into Celtic level with the Rangers' penalty spot on this near side. Yeah, I think Wright did the th right thing there, he went in beyond and Tavernier was looking for short for feet. I think on a day like today, you've got to go in beyond, especially when Celtic are almost at halfway line. Throw in Celtic to be taken by Johnston, bowls it infield to O'Reilly. Back to Johnston, then to O'Reilly, level with the six yard line. His back heel goes straight to Silva. He's able to clear it. Carter Vickers beats Dessers to it and heads it out for a throw into Rangers on this near side. And Lundstrom will leave it to do John Sterling. Bowled back the way to Suter, who squares it to Butland. Oh, he's under pressure again, he wanted too long, eventually he clears it. Tavernier heads it back to Goldson. Kyogo is chasing the keeper down. I think everyone bar Jack Butland was thinking that he was going to be robbed there as Carter Vickers last ditch with Dessers up the other end. Silva finds Lawrence. Couldn't find Dessers though. He's right through to Joe Hart. Rather timid ball 
from Tom Lawrence, and it stays Rangers nil, Celtic one. It's so difficult though for goalkeepers, you know. I, I think you've got to make up your mind quickly and just play it first time. If you take a touch, and especially with the likes of Kyogo, who's got real pace, made of real pace, closing it down, you can't really take a chance. It's not a normal day today, unfortunately, because one of the conditions are because of the nature of the game. And the stakes are so high today. I think Rangers have got to realise, obviously, what Celtic are doing. Most teams will come to Ibrox and sit off. Not Celtic, they're right up against them. So playing lots of passes in the back is not conducive at this moment in some of the conditions that they're playing in. Celtic have it back. Iwata down the left-hand side. Maida taking on Tavernier again. He's now level with the penalty spot. And he lashes the ball. The cross high over the crossbar. And it stays Rangers nil. Celtic won. Sometimes the quality isn't there when it comes to that kind of situation. From Dyson Maida, he's got brilliant facets. No question about it to his game. He is so quick, lightning quick. He can score and sometimes pack his final ball yeah. from the wide areas, lets him down. I, I think most people would be looking at him and saying, wow, he's got pace, he's got strength, he's got all of those qualities. Uh, and if he had that final ball at times, uh, I think there would be a lot of shooters out there after him uh, from that perspective. But you've got to have that quality when you're at the top level. 20th minute, Rangers nil, Celtic one, Sterling gets it from Suter. Driving away from Kuhn. No. Trip there by Kuhn. He's going to be booked. That's his third one in the game. John Beaton just making that point to the Celtic number 10. It's the first yellow card of the afternoon. Yes. And it goes to Celtic's Nicholas Kuhn. Silly, silly booking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he, he was only he's on the halfway line. He's gone past him fine, but he's driving into bodies. He doesn't have to do yeah. that and get himself in the book at this in this game especially. But chance here for Rangers with Silva down the left-hand side Carter Vickers trying to see it behind he goes down and he's been fouled and that's a free kick hasn't started the game particularly well Stuart Fabio no. Silva on this near side no no he's not he's not as he said not like that I think the key now was Sterling obviously he's right footed playing on the left side he keeps checking back just as he did that time go forward with the ball Kuhn has to get back and fouls him so every time now Sterling gets it higher up the park, drive forward and play a 2v1 down the side with Silver and give Silver a bit of possession. Joe Hart plays it across his old box to Scales. Scales coming forward, you can hear the frustration from the range of supporters in the background. It's Iwata, challenged well by Lundstrom, but Iwata emerges with it, finds Hitati, Iwata forward to O'Reilly. First time ball into the feet of Greg Taylor down the left, he's charging forward, rolls it forward to Mai down the touchline. Maida, faced by Tavernier, comes back the way, now moving into central area, trying to get it back off one of his teammates there. It was Hitati, but Rangers have it, Lundstrom has it, he's charging forward now, looking to slip it through to Cyril Dessert, too much on the pass. And Joe Hart comes down, flops onto it inside his box to hold on. 21 and a half on the clock, Rangers nil, Celtic one. Yeah, I've got to say, Celtic have got a really good mentality today, you know, they're... they're you know, you talk about coming to Ibrox where you're going to be up against it and that the opposition's going to put you under pressure. Selling a control in the game. I know the conditions may have a role to play with them with the one blown from left to right, but certainly uh, they're, they're dominating the game. Matate knocking it forward, blocked by Goldson, slips it to right on the far side. Taylor with a challenge. A loose ball there, which Scales is going to get on to first, ahead of Diamande. Finds Taylor onto the halfway line for Hitate. Now Iwata into the centre circle for Carter Vickers. Dessers comes to meet him. He goes to the right for Johnson. He slips it to the left of the circle for Scales. Walking pace. And Lawrence has got to jump up against him. He's sitting deep and Scales have all the time. If you're playing as a 10, you've got to jump onto him. It's been the difference in the game, hasn't it? When Rangers in possession, Celtic are all over them. And Celtic in possession, Rangers haven't been able to put the same level of pressure on their opponents Goldson with a cushion header on the halfway line finds right over on the far side he goes back to Goldson inside his own half forward to right, down he goes free kick Rangers, fouled by Taylor on right over on the far side played a quarter of this third old firm derby of the season with Celtic leading thanks to that Maida goal fortuitous it was important it was and it's 1-0 to the champions yeah, the set piece, and, and you know, will Tavernier have learned from the first set piece where it's gone right through almost to Joe Hart. Joe Hart has a big role to play, I think, today when it comes to these set pieces, but this is a difficult one. 
Free kick's been rolled towards Silva, right-hand side of the box. Can he get there? He can chip it back off a Celtic defender and Rangers have their first corner of the match on 23 minutes off Alistair Johnston. Clever, clever free kick down the side of the wall there. Silva's alert, puts it back, just makes it. And like you say, first, first corner to Rangers to put a wee bit of pressure on Hart. Mohamed Diamande over on the far side. And an opportunity to put the Celtic defence under pressure here. Have had issues defending set plays in the past few years. Diamande, and it comes! Goldson heads over! Big chance! Best chance of the game for Rangers so far. But it stays 1-0 to Celtic, almost in 24. And an enormous chance for Celtic. He's got, he misheaded. I think it comes off as almost oh, his shoulder, just looking at it here. He's got to get his head on that. But Joe Hart's got to come. It's about three or four yards out, inside the six-yard box. He may have been blocked off, but he's got to use all that experience, come get a fist on it and clear, because that ball was travelling at pace from that sort of almost left-hand side, and he's got to get come out and deal with it. It's a great chance, Bucky. Goldson's misread the flight of the ball. Coon with a header forward, O'Reilly giving chase, Goldson's there. What a chance, he's just spurned to draw Rangers level. Here's Lundstrom forward, looking for the run of Silva. Silva's going to get on to it, Carter Vickers comes to meet him, he's level with the Celtic penalty spot. Rolls it towards Sterling, he's off target with the pass, and it breaks to Iwata, who finds O'Reilly. Short ball to Coon on this near side. Infield to Matt O'Reilly. Such a wonderful first half of the season, it hasn't been hitting the same levels really since the turn of the year, but still a class act on that Celtic side. Double figures both in goals and assists this season, the only man in the league to do so. As Maida chases down the left-hand side, gets to the byline, down he goes, challenged by Tavernier, who knocks it out for a throw-in to Celtic over on the far side of it, level with the Rangers' penalty spot. That's the right thing, good run by Silver in behind, but then such a careless pass, you've got to look after the football. So in into the box for Maida, one back by Tavernier, away by Lawrence, but it's broken to O'Reilly, now Maida's in left-hand side, he shoots, saved by Butland and cleared by Sterling, another chance in the game, this time for the champions, and it's Dyson Maida, it's in a wonderful position at the left angle of the six-yard box, his shot looking for the far reverse corner is saved by Butland, and it stays 1-0 Celtic, who are on the attack again here with Kuhn. Short ball to Hitate, steps away from his man, he shoots, and oh. just wide! Just about shaved the left-hand post from Rio Hitate, and it stays almost at 26. Rangers nil, Celtic 1. Celtic flickering into life, couple of chances in the space of 30 seconds, but it, their lead remains at 1. Two huge chances for them, the first one was the best. It comes to Maeda, he's inside, he almost... And shows the goalkeeper when he's putting it side-footed. I think he should have had a disguise on it, uh, and, and almost he, he could have went either near post or across the goalkeeper. He elected to go across the goalkeeper. Good height for the goalkeeper to make There's that Lawrence, save. There's Lawrence, the other end, shoots some distance, blocked by Scales. Breaks to Iwata, and O'Reilly clears it. Kuhn chasing. It's going to go out for a Rangers throw, is it? No, Kuhn gets there. He can only take a touch to knock it forward, straight through to Jack Butland, though who makes the save, Stuart, and yeah, Tavernier Rangers got, almost too behind. Yeah, Tavernier got caught being too narrow. Maeda should do a lot better, he ends up hitting it in the middle of the goal. And uh, Butler makes a comfortable save, it's right at him, but, um, yeah, big let off for Rangers. The host's in possession with Suter, rolls it with a side foot for Sterling, first-time ball, infield to Silva. Brendan Rodgers felt that got out for a throw-in. Sterling has it, tries to switch the play to the right-hand side, headed away by Taylor, it's not decisive. Dessers picks it up from Lawrence, back to Lawrence and Dessers. Foul there by Diamande on Hitati, did a brilliant job there, Rio Hitati, spotted the danger, got himself between the man and the ball, knew the challenge was coming, and wins his team a free kick at the edge of the box, and that just takes the pressure away from that Rangers attack. 27 in, Rangers nil, Celtic 1. We've seen pictures of the England manager, Gareth Southgate, he's up behind us in the, the deck, we do have the monitors in front of us in case of any contentious issues for the guys to get a second or third look at. And that goes out for a throw-in to Celtic over on the far side. That Maida goal inside 22 seconds separates the sides. Yeah, and, and it could have been two up. Uh, you know, Hatati, we didn't describe it, Hatati's shot, but what a really good bit of play around the edge of the box. Create space for himself and then strike it, and it was only probably a foot wide of the right-hand post. Real good strike. 
There's a long ball, Silva's going to chase. Awkward potentially for Joe Hart, but the wind doesn't catch it. Could have caused him a problem there, and it's back in the gloves of the Celtic number one. And now it's Johnston up the line for Kuhn. Just moving in field from Sterling. Lundstrom gives him some help, but breaks John Lundstrom's way. Back to Suter. And Suter slips it forward to Wright. Wright manages to stab it forward, but Celtic have it back. But there was a foul there by Iwata on Wright in the centre circle, and it's brought back for a Rangers free kick just inside their own half. Yeah, I, I'm actually surprised that Celtic doing all the closing down in midfield. They're giving away lots of free kicks, but they're closing down, stopping the game. I thought it might have been the other team, <laughs> Rangers, that would have been doing that on Celtic, but they're not getting close enough. Silva looks as if he's not up to the tempo of the game at the moment. Uh, now, he has got the ability, of course, in the final third to do something in this game, but he has got to take part in the, in the game as a whole. Rangers yet to register a shot on target in the game, which is in its 30th minute. Yeah, the, big, the big chance was Goldson's head and he shouldered it, but as you say, the keeper's hearts had nothing to do. They had three shots on target when they met here in September, and they had three in the meeting at Celtic Park, so six shots on target against Celtic this season up to this point. The scales picks up. The natives aren't happy. Inside the stadium, no Celtic supporters, of course. That's going to change next season. But for this one, and the That's meeting it. post split, there won't be visiting fans as Scales moves it back to Carter Vickers. Oh, assuming Scales gets it now, Lawrence has got to jump from the 10 position and jump onto Scales. You can't, they're just giving Celtic time now to take the sting out of the game, make passes at the back. You've got Dessas and Lawrence should work as a two strikers, really, and go close. Just wonder what's going through Philip Clement's mind. I mean, remember Todd Cantwell was having a particularly difficult game against Addis Limassol in Europa League. He hooked him on the half hour. Is he looking at Silva and thinking, I mean, he, the problem is he's struggling for wide players. Tavernier's been pickpocketed by Maida, who's driving over to this right hand side. Kuhn with a cross, the header, what a save! O'Reilly's net bound header saved magnificently by Jack Butland, who once again proves his worth in front of the watching England manager as well. That looked like 2 nothing. It stays 1 nothing to Celtic. Wow, what a save, but what brilliant play from Celtic. Obviously, Maeda working really hard to win the ball back. Great cross and brilliant header. And I was in the top corner. What a save from Butland. Celtic couldn't do anything with the corner initially, but they got it back wide right. It's Kuhn, plenty of time to pick it across. Too high for Kyogo. It's bouncing around and Butland flops onto it. Rangers leading a charm life right now. Celtic are banging on the door at Ibrox. It stays 1 0 to the visitors as Lundstrom goes long, looking for Silva. Used an arm to control. Sums up his performance so far. It's Rangers nil, Celtic 1. You know, I normally say games like this are normally won in the middle of the park. If you can get middle of the park and win that area, then you've got a good chance of winning. The difference today at the minute is Celtic's front three are closing Hold Rangers on, no. down at every opportunity. Hold on, Stuart, it's come oh, off. Yeah. The elbow of Connor Goldson in yeah. the box from that previous Kuhn cross. Yeah. There is a penalty check going on yeah. here, That's and Celtic might have an opportunity to go 2 0 up. There is a nervous hush around Ibrox Stadium. It's a penalty. It's definitely come off his arm. It's definitely come off his arm. His left elbow. Now, Connor Goldson's got away with a few of these in his Rangers career. What's going to happen here? John Beaton listening to the VAR Nick Walsh. Well, we did say that VAR may have Here he a goes. Big, yeah. Here he goes. He's, He's coming over to look at it, and Celtic could have a penalty here. In all likelihood, they will have. And what a it chance down, it'll be to go 2 0 up at Ibrox in the first half. Guy's getting another chance. It looks fairly decisive to me. His his arm is is up. It's not he's not trying to pull it into his body. It's come out off a flailing elbow. John Beaton, here he goes, makes his sign of the TV and points to the spot. And Celtic have a penalty at Ibrox and a chance to go 2 0 up. Yeah, no controversial there. Maeda just gets a little nick from the cross and then. Yeah, it is, it is Goldson on the elbow and it's a penalty kick, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, and it's Matt O'Reilly that has the ball in his hands, he's the one that's taken responsibility and, and this is a big, big moment in this game, 32 minutes gone for Celtic to go 2-0 up, it's between O'Reilly and Butland. 
Massive moment coming in here. This is Celtic's 15th penalty of the season. They've only converted nine of the 14 they've taken this season. And that doesn't include another one that Luis Palma saw saved against Ross County, which was retaken. Matt O'Reilly, Copeland Road end at Idrox, stands with the ball in his hand, ready to place it on the spot. Potentially the biggest moment of the title race this season here. Right here, right now, at Ibrox. And Matt O'Reilly stands and waits to take. Jack Bogland in the middle of his goal. Here goes O'Reilly, left foot in, and he scores! Chips it down the middle! And Celtic have a 2 0 lead at Ibrox. The silence almost deafening here. And that's a wonderful penalty from one of Celtic's men of the season. And it is Rangers nil, Celtic to 34 on the clock. Well, it's, you know, Celtic deserved it. They've, they've created the chances, they've, they've dominated the game, uh, they, they've, they've bullied uh, Rangers in midfield. What I did say before the game, now it's going to be a critical area when they had composure on the ball, they passed it around. Rangers haven't got close enough to them, they've been nervy, uh, and Celtic 2 0 up and they've created the best chances, Stuart. Packy, you know where it comes from? It comes from Maeda closing down Tavernier early on. The ball comes in, he makes an outstanding save, goes for the corner, the ball comes in, there, it's a penalty kick. The difference between the Rangers front line closing Celtic's back line and Celtic's forward line closing Rangers down is night and day. Here we go again. Look, straight from the kick off, the hound and. Well, once again, Celtic have turned up in this fixture. There have been times this season where the Celtic fans haven't been too impressed with what they've watched. But when Celtic have needed to win, when they've really needed to win, they've won and they are 2-0 up here and Rangers are in a big hole. Yeah, but listen, there's a little half to go in this game. I wouldn't be saying the winning, yes, they're in a great position to win the game, but there's lots of to happen in this game so far uh, and, uh, and half time is going to be big for Philip Clement. Well, Brendan Rodgers just seems to have the Midas touch in this derby and here comes Celtic again an early ball Kyogo's in there and Shooter is to put it behind in fact has he even got a touch it's a goal kick's been given so maybe Kyogo did get the final touch on that one it was fizzed in from that left hand side for Kyogo for a hashi he was, went to attack it's come off the Celtic man last that was a brilliant cross brilliant cross just probably the one that's just taken slightly away from Kyogo but he was in behind Shooter also Johnston wins it off Silva, and it's now back with Hart. I'll be astonished if Fabio Silva comes back out for the second half. Well, he's, he's down there, there claiming he's injured again. It's not going down well with the Rangers supporters. So they are upset with his antics as much as anyone. And Scales slips it out to Taylor on that left-hand side. Up the line to Maida. And then comes back from Maida to Taylor, back to Maida, driving forward. Tavernier wins it off him, now it's Goldson sliding in. And now the play goes off. A Celtic man last for a throw-in on the far side. And the referee is blowing his whistle because Fabio Silva's claiming that he's... At least he's arguing with the referee, and he feels he's been fouled. But uh, as I said, the Rangers fans are giving him dog's abuse here. Well, he hasn't. Has he, is this his first Rangers Celtic game? I think it is, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. he has never played in this fixture again. You've got to stand up as Stuart says, and you get a knock, yes, get on with it and get on and, and show the fans and show everybody that you're up for, for the battle. Yeah, we've seen many players swallowed up by this fixture, unable to handle it. As Johnston comes forward for Celtic, Coon, right hand side of the Rangers box, low ball in, Butland spills it and eventually grabs it at the second attempt with Kyogo snapping around at his gloves. And it stays Rangers nil, Celtic two, 37 on the clock. Tavernier now down that right hand side. Rangers need the next goal, but Tavernier's been robbed by Maida, who's back inside his own box, still under pressure. Dessers tries to pick it up, breaks off Scott Wright, breaks back to right, right hand side of the D. Now Diamande, square ball to Lundstrom, chipped out to this left-hand side for Sterling, and that's going to go out for a Celtic throw-in. Now just listen to this place. This has gone horribly wrong for Philippe Clement and his players. Half-time can't come qu qu quick enough for the manager. I, I would, I'd be absolutely amazed if Silverstone apart from the second half. 
Yeah, they just can't handle. They can't handle Celtic's, you know, closing down. But they also can't handle the conditions, and that that is showing up uh, this Rangers team at the moment from that perspective. Celtic, to be fair, have really played well in this first half. I've got to say they've handled it. mentality. They've passed the ball when they needed to do. They've defended decently, uh, but they've in that final sort of attacking third, they've been deadly. But Celtic knocking it about at the back of Wata. Back to Joe Hart. They've won six of the last eight meetings of Celtic. And they are in a superb position to win this one. We make a major statement in the business end of the season. Here's Matt O'Reilly. Forward looking for Kyogo. The sliding shooter prevents it getting there. Here's Lundstrom. Silva's down again. And now he's throwing himself about, holding his face. Uh, I mean, if he's not been caught in the face here, it is embarrassing. But we'll see a replay. He's still down there. It's as if he's taken a big blow to the nose. And if, if he has done, the VAR will look at it. He came charging forward and ran into Alistair Johnston. Yeah, it's a block, it's a block. But it's not, it's not one where he's, he's up on his feet again. It's a yellow card. Johnston booked from the obstruction. But it's, for, for the reaction, though, is, is incredible. <laughs> it's punched the ground a bit four times in different parts of the ground. <sighs> yeah, I mean, sometimes you can hear Stewart's almost speechless about what he's seeing here from Rangers number seven. And it's Dujon Sterling on the near side. He goes down. He's fouled by Johnston. He's just been yellow carded. He's going to have to be careful. He joined his teammate Kuhn in the book. The two players on the right have been yellow carded as Lawrence tries to slip it through the Dessers. Cut out though, and now Iwata finds Hatate. Hatate forward to Kuhn. Celtic looking for a third before the break here. Five minutes left of the first half, at least of the 45. Kuhn loses it though, and now it's Diamande. Out to Tavernier. Rangers score now. The game's got a completely different complexion at the moment. And there's another loose ball. O'Reilly's got it through to Kyogo. Just outside the box. He's on the right foot. Blocked brilliantly by Goldson. And Suter clears. Rangers nil Celtic 2. The Rangers supporters are howling their derision at their players right now. Yeah, they just oh, they, they, they've lost it really from a composure point of view. They, they, they just can't handle uh, this. They can't handle their own crowd, get on top of them. They can't handle the conditions and they can't handle Celtic's real pressure. Well, they don't know what day of the week it is at the moment. If you ask them what day of the week it was, they'd have to look at the calendar. As Johnston plays it with a throw in forward to Kuhn, back out to this near side. Silva's onto it. Sterling clears it with a left foot. Dessers first time ball for Lawrence couldn't quite control but he's still on it inside the centre circle and finds Diamande low ball out to Silva Diamande was caught by O'Reilly who's the third Celtic player to be yellow carded Celtic with a 2-0 lead 41 on the clock Rangers free kick yeah. O'Reilly booked yeah he just slid in he, he didn't make contact with the ball and he's caught Diamande and uh, he goes in the, in the book that, that's a danger for Celtic now they've got three players I think uh, that, that's all been booked uh, and uh, you know anything can happen in this game of course they've got to be very very careful James Tavernier stands over the free kick just about at the midway point of the Celtic half in the left central area finds Goldson header down looking for Lawrence cleared by Scales picked up by Sterling looks up chip ball looking for Cyril Dessers in there Johnston sees it behind for the corner Rangers corner almost on 42 and of course it's double jeopardy for Connor Goldson he missed Rangers best chance to make it 1-1 before conceding the penalty that is Celtic 2-0 up for all the good work the Celtic have done they've got to defend this corner this is the danger area for, for, for Rangers they've got the height they've got the strength oh I think Suter's coming off yeah, he's, he's, he's got, got blood pouring yeah. from a wound a head wound there, Suter, who would be a big threat from this corner, so they're going to miss that for a start. Goldson's in there, Silva, two Rangers players in the six. And Dessers and Lawrence, Suter being patched up, he will be unable to take part. Here is Tavernier, bends it in, and Hart has to punch it over. That was aimed for the top right corner. James Tavernier might have put that into the most dangerous area that he could. Yeah, yeah, Corner yeah, over on the other it. side. He had to deal with it. Just keep his eye on the ball, get his get his fist. No point trying to catch it. Just clear your lines. 
Celtic nine shots and goal, five on target. Rangers two shots and goal, none on target. The story of the game, 2-0 to Celtic as the corner comes in from the other side and it's cleared in the six yard line away from Goldson breaks the Tavernier chips it in slipped from Lundstrom and it goes out for a it might well be a throw in with the corner flag down in this near side 2-0 Celtic shooter still off being patched up the final two minutes of the 45 of the first half here there will be with VAR there will be extra time of course Matt O'Reilly's 13th goal of the season Celtic 2-0 up one coming from the penalty spot Sterling rolls it back to Butland to come away from his box though he gets there ahead of Kyogo the header from Johnston into the centre circle Atate didn't know what it was Diamande does and now it's with Lawrence right to his right right slips Lawrence drives forward and loses it and the challenge with Taylor scales for Maida first time ball in field to Diamande is fouled by Maida it's a Rangers free kick which is taken quickly by Diamande. Here's Silva to Lundstrom. Last knock into the first half. John Suter being bandaged up, Terry Butcher style down below us. As Lundstrom picks up in the centre circle, gets it back from Tavernier, out to right on the far side, flicks it with the outside of the boot. Tavernier continuing his run, putting the pressure on Carter Vickers, who responds well, and turns it back calmly to his goalkeeper, and Hart launches it forward. Diamande picks it up ahead of Hitate, though, on the right-hand side. Slips it in field, he's given it straight to Coons, a dreadful misunderstanding. And now O'Reilly through for Kyogo. Kyogo steps away from Goldson, he's on his own at the moment. Has to come back the way. Finds Hitati, he's at the edge of the box. Hitati shoots, and it's wide at the right hand side of the goal frame. And it stays Rangers nil, Celtic to the number of unforced errors from Rangers players today has been incredible. Yeah, and, and Selig have exploited them. Uh, that was another really, really good chance. Uh, Hattati just at the final moment uh, gets in behind the midfield and when he was going, he just slipped, I think, uh, under a little bit of pressure and, and the moment was gone, but Selig have created so many chances. And you're right, from Rangers, probably errors. Two added were in the first of them. Here's Silva for Rangers, looking to slip it through to Dessert. Brilliant cut out there by Carter Vickers. He's up in the air. And he managed to hook it away as O'Reilly takes it out to this near side, battling with Dessers. Dessers manages to get it up on it to find Lawrence. Now it's with Diamande. Side football to right, back to Diamande. Forward to right, he's at the edge of the box, through towards Dessers. Silva! Blocked by Hart! Silva again! Blocked by Hart again! Might get a third chance here, Fabio Silva. Left-hand side of the box, tries to pass it back to the 18, cut out by Kuhn and cleared. Rangers finally making Joe Hart work right at the end of the first half. Lawrence to right. And he couldn't get it through to Silva. It's cut out by Carter Vickers and now it's O'Reilly for Hitati. Law would have been forgiven there and Fabio Silva managed to bring Rangers back into this derby match. And they still trail Celtic by 2-0. Zewata has it on the halfway line. Chance there for Rangers right at the end of the first half, Stuart McCall. Yeah, huge chance. Um, good block by Celtic, defended it well in the end, but um, it's been few and far between, Liam. As I say, the big difference for me is Celtic's front three compared to Rangers' front three. And, as you said, so many unforced errors. Rangers are rattled. The key thing is they've got another half, so they get in, the manager will make, 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 Listen, he's going to make changes, even to the personnel, but certainly maybe to the shape as well. Yeah, it's not helping the injuries he has to wide players. Silva probably more comfortable coming through the middle. He's being asked to, to play oh. wide, but of course with Sima Is it not Sima fit and Maton, to start yet. Matondo to come on, then, then both yeah. the McCaws. And is it three wide men? Yeah, he does. They're on, on, the, the, on bench the bench yet. They've all had injury problems recently, and that's the issue. As Kuhn picks up the scraps for Celtic, are looking for a third. They scored in the opening minute of the first half, looking to do so in the final minute of the first. They're not going to manage that. But listen to what the Rangers supporters make of their team's performance here in their biggest Premiership game of the season. They've been like a rabbit in the headlights at times against the champions. And Brendan Rodgers turns and walks up the tunnel. Nobody's got a better winning percentage in this fixture than he does. And you can see why. His team have been at it from the off. Helped, of course, by the ricocheted goal which Maida scored inside 22 seconds. One of the quickest in the history of this fixture. It was unfortunate from Tavernier's point of view, but Celtic taking full advantage of it. And they had a second through Matt O'Reilly's penalty awarded after a VAR check. Came off the elbow of Connor Goldson. 
They've had numerous other chances. Hatate's gone close. And that was a wonderful effort, which just went past the left-hand post. Maida had the shot saved by Butland. Kyogo's been in in the danger area on countless occasions. And Rangers threw Connor Goldson's header, which went over, and that little scramble where Fabio Silva had two attempts at it right at the end of the first half is all they've managed to really muster to challenge Joe Hart. And Rangers' title credentials are taking a severe bashing here. Celtic eyeing up a four-point lead at the top of the top flight. The half-time scoreline at Ibrox is Rangers nil, Celtic two. On digital radio, FM, online at BBC Sports Scotland, your smart speaker, and on BBC Sounds. This is Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. There's no substitute. Wow, I think we were all anticipating a 45 minutes full of uh, excitement, action, drama, talking points. We've certainly got all that. But I can't imagine there were many people who expected to Celtic to come here to Ibrox in front of uh, exclusively Rangers crowd and dominate in the way that they have for uh, virtually the entire first half. 2-0 Celtic, thanks to those goals from Maida and Matt O'Reilly. Um, look, so much to look back on, so much to discuss. We'll give Batten Stewart just a few minutes to gather their thoughts. Tom English is also here. He's been watching on get his thoughts later at the website bbc.co.uk slash sports scotland that's been some 45 minutes tom hasn't it ah uh, yeah it's been excellent from celtic absolutely excellent if you look at your know, intensity accuracy quality aggression work rate composure self-belief they've won every battle every single battle um if they were up to the pitch of this game from the get-go and look the first goal was was lucky there's nothing lucky about 2-0. In fact, you could say, if anything, the Rangers are lucky that it's only 2-0. Uh, Celtic have been have been absolutely terrific. They look like a team that have been over the course before. They know what it takes to get this done. Rangers don't look like that. They have a cup, their, their front three, as the lads have been saying, I totally agree with everything they've said about Rangers' front three. They're, none, of them, none of them are up to the pitch of this game. Silva is, has been embarrassing at times. Well, actually, that, that reaction to the, the block by Alistair uh, Johnson, I mean, he, he'd had previous earlier in the game. He did. But but the reaction to that is, is I mean, I think without shadow of a doubt, the, the most embarrassing thing I have ever seen in a football pitch. It was, it, was, it was dreadful. Now, it was a yellow card. John Beaton has had a very good half. It was a yellow card. But the reaction, considering the foul and the subsequent reaction, it's just laughable. I mean, it's like he's been electrocuted, the way he was, the way he was reacting there. So that, that, can you imagine the Celtic, the gnarled pros in this Celtic team, looking at that, they're going to go, excellent, thanks very much, lads. Load of self-pity there, um, loads of weakness there. We'll have that all day long. You know, awful, awful. As, as Stuart was saying, and I, I looked over, when, 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 I, when Silva was, was rolling around, I looked over at Stuart, tough man of this club, and he was just, just furious, weren't you? I mean, it was just... That's not the kind of oh. thing you need to display in a game like this. Listen, I'm saying he'll be off at half time, and I'm maybe not even about his performance, you know, as a football on the ball or out of possession. Three or four times he's been rolling about, yeah. punching the ground, so you yes. think he's seriously hurt, and he gets up and runs about. That is a thing I've got to say. Is I'm not even go back and say in my time it, this were better and that were better, but. I used to say to my boy, he's not, never let your opponent know you're hurt. Mm. Don't be rolling about and punching the floor as yeah. if you'd been, you know, shot. It's oh, it's just so frustrating. I mean, it's bad enough when you're, you're winning, but when you're losing, you, you don't want to be wasting time. Get up, get on and get on with the game. It's so frustrating when you see players. And by the way, I, I see it through up and down the country, England and Scotland nowadays. It's just a thing that's crept into the game, but it's uh, it's something that you don't want to see. Celtic have been, Celtic have been absolutely terrific. You know, the, their intensity, their high press, their work rate. R Rangers don't know Rangers don't know whether they're coming or going here. That, that, that is going to be the toughest 45 minutes James Tavernier has ever oh, had. Yeah. Maida is running amok over there. Yeah. From the first second, Richard, you could tell the game plan from Celtic, especially in these conditions. I've seen Rangers last week against Hibs, I saw them against Benfica. Teams sit off and they let them play it round at the back. Celtic aren't going to do that today. They're up on them, pressing high, and then it's flustered and it's kicked and it's long ball and it's looked panicky. And when they do take 
straight to Tammy, show a bit of composure, Celtic take them off him. Maeda did it to they get the corner from a great save by Butland, and then, and then they get the second goal. But, I mean, I've just got to say, just before half-time, I didn't give Hart the credit. It's an outstanding save. Yeah. Yeah. Packy will talk more about that, but that is a big, big save by Hart just on half-time there. But there's no doubt Celtic deserve to be 2-0 up. But as to looking at that Celtic line-up this afternoon and the way things have been going, um, I guess, throughout the course of the season, where Celtic was that Celtic team capable of coming here to Ibrox and putting in the performance that we've seen uh, from recent Celtic teams? Well... They most certainly have been able to, haven't they? Oh, no question about it. Uh, and, and, you know, we know that the Japanese players bring that intensity. We know that they will close you down. Every opposition player knows that. And I think right from the off, from, from the goal, uh, Tavernier, you know, hesitates. He doesn't deal with it quick enough. And my head is on him like and, a flash. I mean, we should say and, it's, it's come from a clearance from Joe Hart. I, I know that, I know and, that. And, and the ball is, well, you know that, but people who are yes. listening perhaps <laughs> yeah, don't sorry. know that. Sorry, yeah. I think most of them will be tuned in now at this stage after watching that. But from, from that point of view, that set the tone of the game. You know, that, that closing down. And throughout Celtic have done that and Stewart rightly described it uh, you know the front three of Celtic at the goalkeeper at the centre half at the full backs and when you compare that to what Rangers have done they never closed down at all I don't know if, if it's a mentality thing or if it's a tactical thing uh, but Lawrence sat in on top of uh, on top of Awata in the middle of the pitch he wasn't the danger man it's coming from Carter Vickers and Scales put them under pressure and then you can the, the rest can come in behind you and deal with the ball that's played in the midfield then you have the upper hand Selig have done that brilliantly and they've also passed and, and they're better technical players I've got to say that when I watch what I see out in the pitch at this moment in time they can deal with any little bit of pressure to play around you to play. I think Matt O'Reilly's been ex exceptional in this game he's lent himself to the game he's got on the ball he's shown responsibility we know what a tatty can do and a Watt is just in there and, and, and they sorted out early on they went and pressed and they left Tom Lawrence alone in that sort of game and Selig pushed really high the ball was and, and, and sell it. our Rangers couldn't dominate the ball at that point and they couldn't exploit that space in behind him at Celtic midfield because he hadn't the ball and Celtic just were on them like a flash and it's been a really good tactical performance second half might be different there's a long way to go in this game and that big save from Joe Hart you're right he came out spread himself brilliantly got back up made the second save got a wee bit of luck maybe on the second one but that is a big big moment in the game also it can change, of course it can change. Uh, we've seen that so many times, not just in this fixture, but in so many games generally. Um, but it is going to take um, a real sea change. It's going to take some some substitutions, uh, you yeah. imagine, at half-time. Yeah, I think uh, so, Richard. From the flow of this, if, if you can. Yeah, I think so. I think I, I wouldn't be surprised if Seamus on. He might bring Cantwell on for Lawrence. They even got a chance of bringing Matondo on. And, and, and just showing a little bit more liveliness up top. Because it, there's, there's stages of the game now where at the back, Celtic with Scales and, and Carter Vickers are just playing against Dessers and they're just passing. And that's OK if Rangers are winning 1-0, let them have it. They're losing 2-0. Get some pressure on the back line. Get some pressure on Celtic boys, just like Celtic at Rangers. And then the most important thing after that is then look after the ball. There's been so many uncharacteristic force fairs. Lundstrom, Diamande, Tavernier. Goal. Every one of them who's been on the ball at times has been so sloppy with it they just need to take far more care in the final third but I will say there's always two halves to a game as poor as Rangers have been that half and as decent and good as Celtic have been surely Rangers have got to improve on that Tom you have to imagine that, that it is going to be an improved Rangers performance if it is then that's down to Celtic um, maintaining the form that they've shown if they continue there's, there's still more for them in this game isn't there? There is, yeah. I mean, and you know, if you were to say if there's a, another goal in this game, who's going to get it? You'd probably be back in Celtic at this point, right? To make it three rather than Rangers to make it two one. There will have to be a response from Rangers. There will have to be. Wouldn't be surprised that if they change their entire front three. Uh, probably should change their entire front three because they're not in it. Uh, but Celtic have got such a stranglehold on this game. They look so lively. They look so energetic. They look so intense. Look sharper, Rangers in possession, giving the ball away, spooked, uh, and various parts of the pitch. You'd have to imagine Clement will get them together in the second half uh, for the second half, and they will be a lot better. It couldn't be any worse. How good that 
will be. Who knows how good Rangers, where Celtic will allow Rangers to be. It's at the moment. It's just complete dominance. Yeah. I'm, yeah, kind of, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised, actually. I, I, I've got to say, I'm, I am as well because I, I've not seen that from Celtic. That, that is by some distance the best I've seen Celtic play in months and months. Me, and me months. too. Yeah, me too. And yeah. then they've stepped up back when they've needed to step up. Yeah, yeah. they have. And, and listen, Rangers haven't been in it. The front three haven't been in it because a one uh, Rangers haven't been able to dominate the ball and, and they've been under real pressure from Celtic's uh, front three and the midfield. I've got to say, so they've never been able to get into good, decent position. A few times they've got into decent positions but what they haven't done is closed Celtic down from the back they haven't they haven't put the energy in to say Celtic have done that now will that change in the second and I go back to that question is that down to tactics I'm watching uh, Philippe Clement on the sideline and he's he's out there pushing trying to get get Tom Lawrence to to get forward now but tactically that must have been what he was told before the game you sit in the water don't let him dominate the game and we'll take our chances but he as you rightly say Stuart he's got to release himself as soon as Celtic get the ball go and put pressure on scales go and help your your dessers because they'll play around you they'll use the goalkeeper really well and then they'll control the game so I think it's a tactical situation here and they've got to change that tactic in the second half otherwise Celtic will still dominate the ball Exactly, agreed. Totally, Frankie. You can't, when you're 2 0 down at home with 50,000 fans wanting you to go and have a go, you can't sit off and let Celtic just make passes at the back. You've got to put pressure on them. And if it's Cantwell who comes on and he's playing as a 10, you release yourself onto the centre half and cut out the pass to the sitting midfielder and get the other boys, Lundstrom, Dumandi tight, get Tavernier up behind them, Goldson tight, and try to nick the ball. But, you know, at this moment in time, until that last chance by Silver, you're looking as apart from. Well, a set piece where Golson yeah. has got a free head and he hits it with his shoulder that's a big chance uh, and then another decent ball in from Savigny and, and Hart just flicks it over Stuart I'm going to ask you a question pieces. here you've played in this fixture many times you get tactics before the game game changes you have to adapt does it come from the manager it comes from the players the players have got to take responsibility and, and read the game what's happening big games Packy for me you need big characters and I'm now looking at Lundstrom right can can Golson at the back push Lundstrom tell Lundstrom to release Lundstrom Lundstrom releases Lawrence and push up higher as a team I mean what? listen what they're fearful of is obviously Celtic pace on the break but at the moment you're 2-0 down you've got to get the next goal so there's got to be a high more higher press and get really at them and, and win the ball higher up but, but you I don't do... wait for the manager to, uh, no. to, to have time to come along you do it during the game surely you feel that frustration on the pitch yourself and you think right listen we're a couple of you can't underplay the first goal and the importance of it. it what, 23 seconds to get a goal like that? It, it sinks the crowd, it sinks the players, and everything goes flat. And to prefer to Celtic, they took advantage of it. Well, they certainly did, and uh, throughout the course. I mean, they, they have just looked so threatening. The amount of times Rangers have given the ball away, Celtic have been very eager to uh, get on it. They've been quick, they've been getting the <coughs> passes through, they've been incisive, um, they've certainly been... Well, one magnificent save from Jack Butland and a couple of other very good saves. Richard, that, uh, sorry, well. on that point, that was a, an unbelievable save, let me tell you. He was high up in the corner, he's got himself up there. Brilliant play from Celtic, brilliant header, and I think that again is another moment in this game. If it, if the second half turns out to, that we would expect Rangers to be in, I think that's a, that, that's the save. If, we, if I went to, of course it was before the second goal, but if Celtic got the third goal in that, set, in that first half, game over. Absolutely. Well, well, Celtic actually score from it, Packy, the save, and then the corner, and it comes in and get the penalty kick from it. But that all started, as I said before, from Mayedo taking it off Tavernier high up the park, yeah. and, and, and it led to the goal. Not for the first time. Maeda has been, been all over Tavernier. It's been a nightmare for the Rangers captain. Maeda is not leaving him alone for one second. Uh, what, what struck me on a number of occasions, it, it's almost as if Tavernier this afternoon is just unaware, certainly as he was with the first one. Yeah. But there have been a couple of us where you see him almost turning quickly and, and the yeah. time he's reacted, Jump, just jumpy, he's away with it. I'll t- tell, tell you what highlighted Richard as well. If you remember halfway through the first half, Tavernier got it, drove, drove, and on the edge of the 18-yard box, Maeda took it off him. That yeah. was his work rate, to get back and do that. And obviously Tavernier knows it'd be good as a fullback, attacking fullback against a quick wide player. You want to take him the other way. But Tavernier knows once he goes that way, Maeda takes it off him, he's got a lot of ground to recover in. And, that, and that's what the pace of Celtic up front is a, is a big worry to Rangers' back yeah, line. And, and the question there for, for the likes of Tavernier, player, Rangers players, how many times have you been up against those ty- that type of player? 
you know, dominate the ball. He's high up the pitch. He gets crosses and he does all that. But from a defensive perspective, which is, is your but, bread and butter, he's never up against that too often. No. And that's what, and, and it, but he should be mentality should tell him, I'm going to come up against this guy who is quick. He's sharp. He closed me down. He's got to be at it right from the start. I, I, I can't imagine that Rangers have gone out there today thinking we're going to have time at the back, and they've been spooked. There's no doubt about it because, as I said before in the previous games, they get at the back, they build it up, they build it up slow. Lundstrom drops into the back four, and they build up through the through the thirds. Not as chance he getting a chance with that. Even Butland in the first ten minutes, he closed down twice, got fortunate with one, and that's fair play. Obviously, Rodgers has sent Celtic out to do that, and they've done it really well. Well, the Celtic players are already out. Here come the Rangers players now, and I see one of the Rangers backroom staff hold it. Oh my goodness, Fabio Silva is still there. That has come as a major surprise. It has to be said. Scott Wright, I think, has been sacrificed at halftime. They're certainly uh, one of the backroom staff with the board there. Sima has appeared. That will be greeted with uh, a lot of joy, I'm sure, from the Rangers fans. It is Sima for Wright. Silva somehow emerges for the second half. We're about to get up and running. 2-0 Celtic, live commentary here on Sports Sound and BBC Radio Scotland with Stuart McCall, Pat Bonner and Liam McLeod. Thanks, Richard. Celtic will kick off the second half, going right to left towards the broom loan. Rangers left to right, the blue and white, Celtic in the green and white. Hoops, no changes for the champions. That alteration by Philippe Clement sees Abdallah Sima, who is continuing to recover from injury in the form of substitute appearances, 15 goals he scored in that fantastic first half of the campaign as it was behind for a Rangers goal kick. And now it's played by Butland, short to Goldson, then Celtic two to the good. What can Rangers do is that long ball immediately for Dessers goes all the way through to Joe Hart. Clement has barely found himself in this position. There you go, Liam. Lawrence has jumped, Lundstrom's jumped on his deep line midfield and Rangers won the ball back. Diamande to Lundstrom, back to Diamande, looks up left foot ball, over hit for Silva, and it's right through to Joe Hart. For Brendan Rodgers, it'll be save again, the message to his players for this second half. The Rangers manager, what a huge half-time team talk, guys, the biggest of his Rangers career, which is still in its relative infancy. As Scales launches it forward, it's going to come all the way through to Connor Goldson. Steps away from Kyogo. Chip ball forward, comes off the head of Taylor. And comes right back through to Joe Hart, who gets rid of it under pressure from Dessers and a group of red, white and blue balloons that were blowing across towards him. It breaks to Taylor on this near side for Celtic, up the line for Maida. One of Celtic's performances of the season, this. And they've been excellent in the two games against Rangers so far as well. Yeah, it'll be really interesting. The obvious Celtic will try to pass their way out of the back. Uh, obviously, conditions don't help, but I think they've got the better players they can do it. Uh, and that would be really interesting to see whether the, the, the Rangers front three, with a Seema coming into the team, will they be able to close down uh, this Celtic back four the way that Celtic yeah. did in the first half? And that, that could determine things. Celtic had a throw in down the far side. They've ended up winning a corner off John Suter as well. And O'Reilly will take in the corner over on the far side where visiting supporters are normally housed, none of those today, there will be a return to visiting fans in this fixture next season 5% of the respective grounds will be given up to visiting supporters as the corner is taken short by O'Reilly, gets it back, fires at the edge of the box of Tati, takes a touch under no pressure and shoots oh, and Butlin holds on and he holds on conclusively as well but it's another shot and target for Celtic and it's Butlin bowling it out to Lundstrom on this near side. You cannot afford to give Rio Hitati that kind of time and space at the edge of your own box. I mean, Rangers know about the power of Hitati in that kind of position. Butlin held on. Now it's Iwata dinking it up the line for Maida. Who controls. Goldson committed himself, gets away with it there. Maida's having a look at John Beaton, wanting a free kick, which he's not getting. Got it it is 2-0 Celtic on 48. You're right, that was a, that was a good corner work from, from Celtic. Obviously, Hatati free at the edge of the box. It was a great strike. Goalkeeper's done well, down low to his right-hand side. Uh, ball come through a, a, a ruck of players. Uh, so Celtic having the first opportunity. 
chip ball, Goldson out to this near side, Tavernier couldn't control Taylor with the challenge, it breaks Lundstrom's way, hoists it high down the line for Seema, headed away by Scales, breaks to Lawrence, Dessers has made his move, but Carter Vickers closes the door and wins it back and finds Awata to the right for Kuhn, who couldn't really control, Sterling holding him off, and into the midfield goes to John Sterling, slips it to Seema on this near side, and he started on the right here, Adala Seema taking on Taylor Maida coming back to put the challenge in. And slides in on Seema, comes off Maida last and out for a Rangers throw-in. Level with the Celtic penalty spot on the Rangers right. Got to go back really to the 29th of August 21 to find a Rangers meaningful win in this fixture in the league. Melander scored the only goal. Comes early in the post of Coglu era as Diamande slips it out to the left for Sterling. Out to Silva, level with the Celtic penalty spot, now he's level with the six. Tries to play it across, cut out though by Johnston. Silva's getting no change out of the Canada International. As Lundstrom has it, stabs it forward, looking for Silva, throws himself to the ground after the challenge. He's looking for a penalty there. Carter Vickers has it on the right. And now it's O'Reilly. He's not endearing himself at all, Fabio Silva, to those around him. And it's going to be, I think, a Celtic free kick when all is said and done over on the far side for a foul in Carter Vickers. It is Rangers nil, Celtic two. Almost five minutes into this second half. Butland in goal for Rangers, Tavernier, Goldson, Suter, Sterling, Lundstrom, Diamande, Seema, Lawrence, Silva, and Dessers, Celtic, Hart in goal. Johnston, who was booked, Carter Vickers, Scales, Taylor, O'Reilly, who was booked, Iwata, Hitate, Kuhn, who was booked, Maida and Kyogo. Seema coming on for right at the break. Celtic have it wide on the far side. Lovely little pirouette there by O'Reilly, but he's had it nicked off by Lundstrom. It's ball into the midfield, didn't reach its intended target. Seema and Dessers almost managed to feed off it, just evades both of them though. Maida finds Taylor, and up the line, Maida's not going to get on to it. It's Tavernier, who knocks it back into his own half for Goldson. And now Diamande is fouled by Hitati, free kick to Rangers. Just some to Lundstrom, what that did early in this game, he won it really well and then gave a really sloppy casual pass. Sterling has it, good play from him wide in the left, slips it out wide left, it is Fabio Silva, which hops onto the right, back onto the left, goes down, John Beaton's going to book him for diving! Booking for diving for Fabio Silva, who hits the deck in the box, no penalty! And it's a yellow card instead! for Fabio Silva in this infamous performance from him today on his old firm debut. Well, John Beaton was about five yards away from that incident. We'll watch it here on, on TV. We're, we're, we're well away from it, but he was decisive, uh, the, the referee, in, in his actions. Well, the VAR will obviously have a look at it. It was Alistair Johnston's challenge. Now, Johnston's on a yellow card himself here. And Nick Walsh is having a look at the decision, which was simulation. Johnston left the right boot in, Silva, as he waited for the contact, did it ever come? Stuart McCall, Packy Bonner, both getting a chance to see a replay of it. I think it was the delay afterwards, you know, when, when he's gone past him, I think he's just got a little flick on the ball, but it's obviously going to be checked, but, I, oh, for God's sake. Well, Silva's now got embroiled with Liam Scales running about the penalty spot. Because Rangers are going to launch a comeback, they need all 11 players on the pitch. I but think, he's, I think I, what Silva's trying to do there is going to protect the penalty spot, thinking he thinks he's going to get a penalty kick because Scales was standing in the penalty spot. But for me, try to see it again. It, I mean, listen, he's made. Don, he's going to come and look at it. Well, now, Silva was challenged by Johnston and Nick Walsh. The VAR has asked John Beaton to come over and have a look at it. A Rangers about to find a route back into this derby match. All eyes on John Beaton as he walks over to the screen down in front of us in the main stand. Now he's crouching over it so nobody else can see this and the guys can see the replay. Has Johnston's right boot caught the right knee of Fabio Silva? Difficult to tell from that angle that we're seeing. No, I think there's contact, but <laughs> there's 100% is contact, but whether it's Silva's just has gone in much into Johnson as Johnson's gone into Silva. Oh. He'd probably rather be anyone but John Beaton right oh. now, but I know he relishes his officiating. Yeah, he's five, listen, he's the referee, he's five yards away from it initially, he makes a decision what he's seen uh, in that... 
Right, here we go. Here we go, John Beaton. Here he goes. No, he's he made the sign of the telly, and he's given Rangers the penalty. Now it's a further action for Alistair Johnston, who's already been booked. Fabio Silva, the yellow card scrapped for him. And now he's making his move to Johnston, who's got his hands in his hips. Ibrox expecting further punishment here, and it doesn't look like it. Penalty only. And I think Rangers will take that right now, given they are two down. And James Tavernier is asking the referee why Alistair Johnston is not receiving a second yellow there. Silva was going through on goal. Well, we'll pick the bones out of that in a moment because Rangers have a chance here through James Tavernier, who actually is a good recent goal-scoring record against Celtic. Most of them have counted for nothing. This is their 19th penalty of the season. And James Tavernier stands with an expectant Ibrox watching on against Joe Hart. Rangers captain has so often come up with the goods and he does again. <laughs> Top left corner. Away from the diving heart. And from nowhere, Rangers are right back in this derby match. This oh, so crucial derby match at Ibrox. It is Rangers 1, Celtic 2. Well, we did say Bar could have a big say in this game. I'm not sure if that was a, a penalty. Slow it down, yes, absolutely. But for the referee to be five yards away, make a big decision, books the player, and then VAR steps in and he changes his mind and, and, and gives Rangers a penalty. But that's the game. We, we have to move on with it. Volley Vading Kuhn, the Celtic look to attack straight after the goal. It's a very, very different game now, Stuart McCall. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, I still get my, my breath back. What, what a penalty kick that is by the from Tavernier. I was here last week against Hibs and in this one. And it's right in the top corner. It's a you know under pressure, really good penalty kick. But yeah, listen, both sets of supporters will have the view on that. There was contact, but it was oh, it was 50-50 for me the penalty. 23rd goal of the season for James Tavernier, his previous best in a campaign was 19. And now Rangers win it back in the midfield and Fabio Silva suddenly looks recharged and Lawrence is peeled off to his left. Options to the right. Siba plays it across block. It's a second chance. Silva towards goal. Hart holds on, but it's gone in. Dessars has prodded it home. And this place is going absolutely nuts now. Cyril Dessars taps it home and Rangers have scored twice in a couple of minutes to level and it's Rangers 2, Celtic 2, incredible. Let, let me tell you, another big moment in this game, midfield, free kick, John Beaton doesn't give it, play rages on and Silva then gets him into a situation, Celtic should have done better defensively, I've got to say in the final moments, but that was another big, big moment from John Beaton in the middle of the pitch. It's absolutely he's incredible. Coming, it is coming, difficult. He's coming across. Yeah. He's going to look at it. If, it, if this far changes this decision, John Beaton has got has big decisions to. He should be making during the game. VAR shouldn't interfere with with those decisions. He should be calling it. In my opinion, Stewart. Right. Well, we'll get Stewart's take in a moment. It's for a potential foul on Iwata by Tom Lawrence. So. John Beaton's down, have a look at the monitor. Does this goal survive, Stuart McCall? Is it? What do you think? It's halfway between a halfway well, and Well, he's going to tell us. Yeah, he's disallowing the goal. No, no he's given it. Goal given. It. Oh, given. given. No, it's a free kick. Free kick. Oh, no, free no, kick. no. <laughs> well, it's certainly not there. That is, yeah. He's given the free kick. It's no goal. Yeah. Incredible! He pointed towards the centre spot, which Celtic at the free kick, and it stays 2-1 to the champions. Oh, well, there's word. VAR in a nutshell. <laughs> it stays 2-1 Celtic. What an incredible moment 
they are yet again. We did ask, could VAR be involved today? Well, it's been heavily involved. And the Rangers supporters are all standing around wondering what on earth's going on. It's been brought back for the foul. And it stays Rangers 1, Celtic 2. I've got to say, Liam, my initial reaction was it could have been a foul, but he's been letting so many things go. You know, little free kicks when he's been trying to get the game going, and yeah, as soon as he gets called to the to the monitor, then he, he's, he's given a free kick. Well, that's a massive relief for the Celtic supporters, that's for sure, Packet. Yeah, just listen, I'm in shock. I'm in shock that VAR has allowed this game to almost create another story, another story yeah. that will be talked about for for the next month or so, and, a, and a, you could people have described it as a, a title decider. Did you did you see many Celtic players going to the referee when yeah. the goal was scored? Yeah, yeah. They so did. they were all adamant that it was adamant. a free kick. And, and Brendan Rodgers also yeah. going to Willie Collum, who was the fourth official. Well, it certainly looked like a foul, but the on-field referee didn't see it and at least was willing to let the VAR check it after the move was completed. His Rangers in possession, Sterling down the left-hand side, cut out and it breaks to Kuhn. Now he comes forward, away from Suter, outside of the boot ball for Kyogo. Celtic need to steady themselves here because they've taken a blow in the second half. Yes, that goal was ruled out, but Tavernier's penalty has given Rangers renewed belief here. Here's Lundstrom poking it forward to Sima, down the right-hand side. Rangers have come to life here, looks to cross. Not a great delivery, though. He's overhit it, Dessers chasing, keeps it in play. He's done well to turn it back to Diamande. It's ball forward, cut out with the head of Tomoki Iwata on the 18-yard line. And then over on the far side, bouncing balls awkward for Kuhn. Into the midfield for O'Reilly, he was fouled there. And it will be a free kick against Diamande yeah, on O'Reilly. We played an hour, Rangers 1, Celtic 2. Yeah, we did think that the second half was going to be different, and it certainly has been. And, and I think it's probably a little bit more down to the conditions in both halves that, that the, the, the team that's playing from left to right, as we sit and see it, uh, has got the advantage. And that's where Celtic need to now almost show a bit more composure than Rangers did in the first half, because they are under pressure. Celtic, Celtic were streets ahead in that first half but yeah, suddenly but it is they who look a little bit rattled yeah, I don't think there's any doubt the manager's got Rangers in and have pushed a lot higher you can't let the Celtic just dominate the ball at the back and Lawrence has been jumping higher what it does do it sometimes leaves Goldson 1v1 with Kyogo if Suter then has got to jump onto the Teta and comes now with Maida Hitate goes down fouled by Lawrence free kick Celtic over on this near side inside their own half and they could be doing it buying themselves a little bit of time here Hitate's taken a sore one he has he I has he's okay he's, he's gone right in the back of him and Lawrence at him to be honest I thought that was a that was a, a almost like a, a knee into the back of the thigh it's a huge let off isn't it Packy for Celtic as uh, Rangers have a man down as well down on this yes, near side it. and we wait and see Same if Diamond is going to be OK it's Diamond yeah, and yeah. it's going to be the medical team are working on him just now Brendan Rodgers is down there with his arm around his captain Callum McGregor so it might be that McGregor's return the first team action is coming in the next couple of minutes it's a major let off for Celtic that one Packy that was brought back because this place was going tonto when Dessers took that home yeah huge and it's always the case when you lose a goal the next couple of minutes after that you've got to be really really clued in and, and, and Celtic lost it but the foul was given as, as an incredible uh, situation that VAR has got you know that's three big big moments in this game uh, obviously two being the goals and then the other one uh, being a, a free kick that led to a goal so huge absolute long ball forward comes all the way through to the Celtic keeper Joe Hart yeah but a change that that, that uh, Stewart has talked about is just oh. Lawrence you can see him every single time now oh. he's going on that should have oh. happened in the first half and it should have been led I think by the players more so than than maybe the management having to come in at half time to do it a bit of pressure Rangers win the ball back Lundstrom has it back onto the halfway line for Suter stepping away down the left hand side charging forward here is John Suter what a run it is he's up at the edge of the box good challenge by Johnston though 
And now Hatate has it. Lucas to sweep it down the left-hand touchline for Maida. Tavernier facing his own goal. Passes it back to Butland. He takes a touch in his six-yard box and clears. Now it's with Diamande, who's moving freely. Looks OK. Slips it down the right here for Sima. Buggins Taylor, who's having a harder second half. Sima to the byline. This cross is cut out, though, by Taylor. Sima gets back onto it. Heads it to Lawrence inside the box. Scoops it to the back post area. It's a really poor ball from the Welshman, though. And it goes behind for the goal kick. Let's get news of a double change coming up for Celtic from Kennedy Nitsan. Already stripped. The Celtic captain, Cal McGregor, and Yang as well. I would imagine Iwata and Kuhn would be taken off, but that's still to be confirmed. Definite. McGregor on, Yang on. Well, the Celtic supporters will be elated to see their skipper back. Yeah, it's a big, big uh, role for him now in this what. 25 minutes to go in this game. He's got to now show composure. He's got to be at it, uh, you know, and, and they will take risk by giving him the ball in that uh, midfield uh, and that. But he has got the one. What is, uh, sorry, Hatati, is the Hatati just come off? Yeah. Yeah. And the message from Rangers now is, as soon as McGregor looks to go and get on the ball, somebody in a blue shirt has got to get on him and try to win it back and win it high. But, I mean, we saw there now, Seaman has got the running of uh, Taylor down there down the right-hand side here, Get, keep feeding him the ball, but that's a really poor ball by Lawrence in the end. Well, nobody on this field of play has played this fixture more often than Callum McGregor, who comes on, looking to renew his battle with Rangers, which has been, by and large, a very successful one down the years. And this is his 37th go at this fixture, albeit as a substitute this time. And it's back with John Souter wearing that head bandage after that knock in the first half. It is 2-1 Celtic, but it's Rangers with Sterling. And now with Diamande. McGregor with a fistful of his shirt, but Diamande turns away from him. Rolls it out wide right for Sima, who is tripped to the ground by Greg Taylor. And it will be a free kick to Rangers on the near side. I think the Rangers fans want Greg Taylor booked there. Listen, it's a, it's a foul. You get up and you get on with it. But brilliant play by Diamande. Keep giving the ball Seema now he's up against Taylor. Keep stretching the game down this side. Yeah, he's made a big impact, hasn't he, Seema, since he's come on. He's got a lot to the ball down this right-hand side. James Tavernier stands over the free kick. And on this Rangers right. A chance to fling the ball in. A couple of yards from the touchline, and it comes. It comes off the head of Silva. Lunged him with the header forwards, cut out. And break to Sterling. Try and keep this attack alive for Rangers. A very high ball down the left. Lundstrom's not going to get there, and it bounces behind harmlessly for the goal kick to the visitors, who still lead this game by 2-1 to one on 66. Yeah, Sally continually trying to play from Joe Hart to, to the centre-half. But if you see it now, Puckett, it's all 1v1s all over the park. Yeah. They're leaving goals and by... But, but uh, the space is high up yeah. the pitch. You know, Kyogo is in acres of space in front of goals, and that's the ball you've got to play with quality. Long ball forward, which Suter gets his head onto. Lundstrom flicking it out to that far side. And then walloped forward by Dujon Sterling. Silva's going to chase it. Carter Vickers is the covering Celtic player. And it, too, is going to go behind for the goal kick. Celtic seem to, just in the last few minutes, seem to have ridden out the storm that was coming their way since the break. I've no doubt. Look, look at the setup now from Rangers. They've gone one to one, so Celtic can't play out from the back. Here they go, squeeze heart, and then they leave one for one at the back. Listen, it's risk and reward. At this stage, when you're 2-1 down, you've got to do that. Headed on by Yang, who replaced Kuhn, and the other change that Kerridin brought us news of there. Sterling's won it back for Rangers down the left-hand side. Johnston chasing it as well, but there was a foul by Yang just before that, so a free kick will be given to Rangers over on that far side touchline. Looks like another Celtic change coming, Kerridin. Yes, a couple of changes coming. Todd Cantwell is stripped for Rangers and getting stripped right now in front of me. Adam Eder for Celtic. Looks like Matondo as well coming on for Rangers. So big changes from both teams as we approach the last, what, 25 minutes or so. It is a massive afternoon in the title race. Fans of the other clubs don't give a jot about what's going on here today. And for these two, it is ginormous. It's Tavernier gets the ball in, Lawrence attacks, or at least he should have done. Carter Vickers gets onto it. There's a flag up in the near side anyway, so it wouldn't have counted had it found the net. 68 played, Rangers won, 
Celtic 2 here on Sports Sound on BBC oh. Radio Scotland. Kicks it against them, can't have it, he kicks it against Lawrence. It's really good defending by him. Yeah, I'm not surprised at this change slightly, mainly because of what we're seeing out on the pitch, especially from the goal kicks. Adam Ida will come on, he is a target man, he can play it up if Joe Hart's got the ability to play balls into his feet. The space is there for them to exploit, and then they can get Yang, then they can get Maeda to, to come and support him a little bit more in the inside. But that is the ball for, for Sully to play, and that creates a, a, a situation for Rangers. Do, a, do, do they push on to Awata? Do they leave that space? Does Lindstrom yeah. push on to O'Reilly? Does... Uh, the, the Monday push on to McGregor. That's what they're doing, but Golson just said to Tavernier about Ida coming on, he's looking to turn me, roll me, make sure you can try to give me a wee bit of cover. You heard the changes being announced in the background there, Rangers making the double change, Tom Lawrence has been replaced by Todd Cantwell and Fabio Silva replaced by Matondo. Silva winning the penalty has helped him in the eyes of the Rangers fans. Penalty converted by Tavernier, it's given them a chance. Sterling back to Butland for pressure from Ida. Celtic have barely been seen as an attacking force in the second half, but they do have a throw in in the attacking third over on that far side. Their lead now, a slender one goal, but it is a lead. And they have a throw over on the right hand side to be taken by Johnston. Level with the penalty spot by the time he takes this. A little bit of movement ahead of him. The Rangers fans wanting to get on with it, and it comes towards Adam Ida. It's a little bit too high, though, and Butland holds on. On the six-yard line, Rangers thought they were level through Dessers. After Celtic's two goals in the first half, Maida opening the scoring, and O'Reilly converting a penalty of his own after Tavernier, or before Tavernier did so for Rangers in the second. And then within a couple of minutes, Dessers had the ball in the net, but it was ruled out for a foul in the build-up by the VAR, at least by the ref, after an advisement from the video assistant, a shooter slips it out to Goldson on this near side. Up the line for Tavernier. Infield, chipped by Maida, free-kick Rangers. Tavernier wanted to take it quickly, Maida standing in the way, and Maida's got himself a yellow card. I don't think he was certainly not going to get booked for the foul, which the Rangers supporters thought he should have done, but he gets it for standing in the way, too close to the free-kick, as... Suter collects and rolls it back to Diamandis between the two centre-backs. Goldson, first time out to Tavernier. Seema's ahead of him, he's looking for him, he's overhit the pass, though. Poor ball from James Tavernier, who apologises to his teammate. But in the final 20, in fact, almost in the final 19, Rangers 1, Celtic 2. Celtic are 19 minutes plus stoppages away from a massive three points. Yeah. Made has just got to, got to hold his position a little bit. He, he, he's stepping on to the other centre half and has an easy ball out uh, to Tavernier, who is a dangerous player when he's got all that freedom high up uh, the pitch. Lundstrom with the header goes all the way back to his keeper. Butlin underneath it. Underarm bowls it to Lundstrom on this near side. Low ball, side footed up the line here for Sima, but he's been caught by Taylor, who has it back for Celtic, and he's driving forward. Greg Taylor, clever chip ball for Yang. Yang trying to shrug off Sterling, who wins it back for Rangers, though. Slipped out to the left-hand side for Ravi Matondo. Scored that wonderful goal against Hibs here last week. Poking it forward, looking for Cantwell. Cut out by Carter Vickers, who finds Yang on the far side. Infield for Iwata, and out to O'Reilly on the right. O'Reilly goes down, he's done really well there because he didn't look favourite, he got himself between the man and the ball and he's brought down by Mohamed Diamande and that's a free kick to Celtic which comes back the way to Johnston inside his own half, moves it right to left of the circle for Scales and McGregor under pressure, manages to get it back to Carter Vickers but it just didn't have the pace on it, it was comfortable for the defender he's to, on the slide, put it out for a Rangers throw in on this Rangers right Lundstrom gets it back from Seema, did really well to keep it in play there. Lundstrom back to Goldson. Goldson across halfway, finds Cantwell. Cantwell forward to Tavernier. Tavernier just bounced off his heel though. He's going to get a second chance though. Celtic not decisive at the back this time. John Lundstrom stepping away from O'Reilly, switching it oh, to Suter, first time ball forward. Now it comes to the right-hand side of the penalty area for Cantwell. Cantwell now chops on to the right, turns it back to Tavernier, the chip to the back post is headed away by Johnston. And Yang completes the clearance. Yeah, poor decision earlier from Yang, he stepped out when he shouldn't have. Uh, 
and he created the space for, for Rangers to exploit. Well, Yang's down clutching his face. So officially, that would be a head knock. The ref's allowing Rangers to play on. He's now stopped it. Yang's still on the deck. All eat away. Uh, a few more seconds. Celtic are making poor decisions at the moment. Yep. That's a big change in the second half. Even their passing, they're not uh, being, being... They're sloppy in their pass. They're giving Rangers that yeah. just little chance to nick balls in dangerous positions. Rangers are showing more composure on the ball now. It comes with confidence. Suter just stepped in there. Lovely pass, but it's like he says. Celtic are jumping out. It worked for them in the first half. Rangers are showing a little bit more composure. Trying to play around. About to tick on to 74 minutes. Rangers back in action, that game in hand against Dundee on Wednesday. Sports Sign will have full coverage of that, although I hasten to say I think a yellow weather warning has been announced for the area in the next uh, couple of days, so I'm sure they'll get the covers back on that dense part pitch. The split coming, just that one set of fixtures to come before the league splits next weekend. That match of the day, surely, at Far Park, Motherwell Hibs. As Celtic come down the left-hand side. In it comes, low ball into the box for Yang. He almost managed to get a shot away in the penalty spot. Cut out, though, and it's brilliantly defended by Dijon Sterling because he had to stick to his task there. It's Carter Vickers tries to hold off Dessers and cleared by Joe Hart at the other end. You can't take your eyes or ears off this for the next 20 minutes or so. About 15 left of the 90, and Celtic lead sitting at 2 1. Celtic emerge with the ball over on the right hand side with Tomoki Iwata. Looking for an option in green and white hoops around about, and nobody at the moment is eventually tripped by Lundstrom, and that will do Celtic the world of good there. And Iwata's done really well. There were two or three Rangers players snapping away at his heels. Eventually, one went too far, and Celtic have a free kick just to the right of centre, midway inside. The Rangers half. You can't underestimate Liam that what a fantastic block that was from Dujon Sterling. We can see it building up here. Boy gets across him and he's, he's because of his recovery, and that's what his strength is. An outstanding block could have been a free hit from what eight yards and could have been three one. So outstanding by Sterling there defensively. Rangers change, Cardin. Yep, Keenan Dowell's about to come on, just wait and see what number comes up, but he is stripped, ready for action as Clement once again goes to the bench to try to get this match level. Keaton Dowell hasn't played since the 2nd of January when Rangers beat Kilmarnock here. He's been out injured. They might just have to hold that substitution with, with Sterling being down at the moment. Unless it is Sterling that's coming off, but I wouldn't have thought so. No, I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah. And Barisic is on the bench, so that would be the alteration to the substitution if it's required. But you can see the conditions out there, really, really blustery. I think it's affected the game for, for both teams. Uh, it's almost how do you deal with that conditions, uh, Stuart? You've got to have have a, have a really good composure, you've got to have mentality, but you've got to then get your passes away early and, and sharp. If you get caught in the ball in any position, that's going to create an opportunity for the opposition, and, and that's the way it's panned out in this game. I think Sully dominated the first half because of it. Rangers have... You could say dominated the second half. Celtic have been trying to play out against it uh, and have created their own own problems. Yeah, as far as the conditions are concerned, at Celtic Park, sometimes, unless it's rain, but when it's windy, it's Celtic Park, you don't really notice because it's generally it's fully enclosed. Whereas here at Ibrox, the main stand, you've got the two open ends to our right and to our left. Uh, Sterling's back in his feet. Dowell's waiting. And I think they're going to be happy to make the change. And it's Diamande who's going to be replaced by Kieran Dowell, who has not had much in the way of action. He agreed to join Rangers last May from Norwich City. And this is just Dowell's 13th appearance of the season. He's managed a few goals, scored against Livingston, scored against Motherwell in league matches. He comes on the final 12 and a half minutes. So we have a good chunk of added time as well, though. Johnston, McGregor exchanging passes on the right. Now with Johnston slipping it forward, looking for the O'Reilly. Cut out by Lundstrom O'Reilly, trying to win it back. Rangers have it now, though. And it's broken into the midfield for Dowell, who's just on. Now he's driving forward across halfway. He goes. He's got Sima to his right. Sima trying to slip him in behind Taylor. Can he get there? Has it gone behind? No, it's still in play. And eventually Hart holds on with the referee. Looks at his assistant on this near side, Dan McFarlane, who has his flag up. 
and it remains Rangers 1, Celtic 2 on 78 minutes. There's a bit slow putting this flag up there because the play still continued. You know, it's not an offside. Put your flag up if, it, if the ball's over yeah, the why line. Why is he waiting for that? Yeah, exactly. Offside, they've got to play on, but it's clearly out behind for a goal kick and make the decision. Here's Taylor for Celtic on this near side. Plays it off Dowell and out for a throw-in on this near side. That's allowing now Hart from the goal kicks to hit Ida, who's one-on-one -on -one with goals, and it gives him that outlet because he holds the ball at well. Quick throw in Taylor from Maida, looking to turn away from Goldson. Not quite on this occasion. Goldson sees it behind for the goal kick. It's Jack Butwin will take. Rangers 1, Celtic 2. As it stands, Celtic will be going four points clear at the top of the Premiership. Rangers would have that game in hand at Dens to come on Wednesday. And it would be Celtic who would be top with both teams having played the same number of matches. With just that one derby to go as Edad as well to win it off Goldson down the left hand side. He's looking for support and Green and White in the middle now. Ida has it, level the six yard line. He's thinking about shooting himself here and eventually overcooks it. It does deflect off a defender towards Yang, but Yang's ball back to the edge of the box for Awata. It's pinched back by Dowell. Goldson will be breathing a sigh of relief. Here's Kieran Dowell for Rangers. 2 1 to Celtic. 80th minute, here's Todd Cantwell. Out to that left-hand side for Matondo. Infield for Cantwell. Taken away from him, but it might break back here to Matondo. He's inside the box. His shot blocked brilliantly by Carter Vickers. And that's going to drop out to the far side for Celtic, where Yang is able to blast it clear. Comes bouncing off Ida, picked up by Tavernier. And now Dowell firing it out towards Lundstrom. He can't control, and it's out for a Celtic throw-in. As we tick on to that 80-minute mark, Brendan Rodgers down there with John Kennedy in their technical area. Two big moments there, Liam. Well, Two big moments. One, one Adam, Adam he done everything right, brilliantly up against uh, Connor Golson, and then he just his decision, final decision was very, very poor. And Yang, and then on the other end, brilliant block yeah. from Carter Vickers. I've got to say, Seema for Rangers, Taylor with the challenge. Taylor losing out, but McGregor's there to help. Back to Iwata, he scoops it forward, but it's picked up by Lundstrom. Now Goldson, the ball hanging in the wind, is headed away by Taylor. Next to O'Reilly, little cushion header for Maida, one back by Lundstrom. Now Goldson for Dowell. Dowell now finds Suter in the centre circle, turns it to Tavernier in the halfway line. Tavernier out to Todd Cantwell on this near side. It's ball down the line, cut out by Taylor, who's had a good afternoon. Greg Taylor, a little difficult spell at the start of the second half, facing Sima Celtic make a change, Kennedy. Paolo Bernardo coming on for Celtic for the last nine minutes or so. It's Matt O'Reilly who's having a handshake with John Beaton. Celtic fans will remember his lovely dink penalty in that first half. He's walking off now. Bernardo on for Celtic. It's a wonderful penalty, so nonchalant from Matt O'Reilly. And that, right now, is the match winner. O'Reilly replaced by Bernardo, who was on the score sheet against Rangers in the Celtic Park meeting during the festive season. Yeah, he's had a good game, Matt O'Reilly, I've got to say, first half especially, not so much in the second half, uh, and he's probably run it out of steam a little bit, so uh, Bernardo has got a, a role to play now, a huge role. He's got to pick his moments, when to close, when to fill spaces. Chip ball by Lundstrom to Tavernier, heads it forward infield to Sima, battling with McGregor, he wins it back momentarily, but Sima has it. A little bit short with the ball to Lundstrom, who's then fouled by Maida. And Rangers will have a free kick on this near side, on the touchline, midway inside Celtic territory. Tavernier over it, and a clear foul by Maida, I think he knew what he was doing there. A free kick to be taken by the Rangers skipper. He's got his right arm in the air. So he looks for somebody in blue and white to get in the end of this. And it comes into the Celtic box. Lundstrom attacking it, but he heads it well wide. And it stays Rangers 1, Celtic 2. And Celtic are edging ever closer to a priceless three points as they look to retain their title and make it three in a row. Yeah, and uh, again... You know, they can play that ball. They don't have to wait until uh, until they push up the pitch. I would say the space is there, it's already there, created. And uh, that's why Adam Eda is on the pitch and he won that ball. Lundstrom knees it back to his goalkeeper, Butland. 
Celtic win would see a team win the first three of these derbies in a season for the first time in 20 years. Celtic won all four meetings that campaign. Butland rifles it forward high, underneath it is Scales unchallenged. The header from Iwata in the centre circle finds Maida. Now it's on this left-hand side. Rangers pick up Dowell, goes back to his keeper, and Butland fires it high up into the air. Scales with his eyes on it here, heads it forward. Bernardo with the touch forward, and it's broken to Suter. Both teams scrappy in possession right now. Suter finds Matondo. On the far side, he rolls it back to Suter. Rangers have lost three league games here at Ibrox this season. They've only lost three in the previous three seasons. Yeah, They're about just, to lose a fourth here. Yeah, I'm just looking at Tavernier's position high up on this right-hand side. All the freedom in the world. Uh, May has just got to stay on him and, and, and not allow him to be the one who's going to go and create in the balls of what him at the moment. Tavernier with the outside of the boot, flicks it to the edge of the area for Dessers, goes back to Dowell. He's under pressure, though, and it's brilliantly defended by Iwata initially, but Sterling picks up the scraps. Matondo crosses in and scales with a really decisive header away. Bernardo picks up in the right, fires it forward, looking for Ida, cut out well by Suta, who finds Goldson. Goldson steps across halfway, heading towards the final five of 90. Goldson on the chip ball, can't find Tavernier, and he goes behind for the goal kick. He's got his head in his hands there, his manager down there, asking for more from his players. Almost an 85. Rangers won. Celtic too, and neither manager thought that the title would be decided today. Yeah, I did but say at half time. Sorry, Liam, I did say at half time that there would be extra time, and he called it right on 45 minutes. And uh, I think there will be now with those VAR decisions, there will be extra time. So you can see maybe five, six minutes. Throw in Tavernier to take. Ball back to Goldson. Well, given they were two 0 down, Rangers would absolutely take a draw today. Now, Celtic. It would be one that they will look back on with regret if they're not able to hold on. And here's Dowell forward to Dessers, looking for Cantwell, can't control, away by Scales. Now it's McGregor. McGregor oh. in field, it's a loose one from Callum McGregor, doesn't happen often. Sterling for Rangers out to the left-hand side of the box. Matondo blocked there, breaks back towards Siba! Goal! A massive deflection! But Abdallah Siba! is completely bamboozled Joe Hart but that might just ensure Rangers don't lose this game it is Rangers 2 Celtic 2 and what is a monumental afternoon in this title race yeah a mistake from Callum McGregor square pass across in a dangerous area give the ball away uh, and uh, suddenly Rangers get the opportunity and you're right big big deflection in this game uh, and, and that sort of situation that Joe Hart had no chance goes into the top corner. Callum McGregor did give a bad square pass away, but I've got to say, Dujon Sterling again pounced on it with his athleticism. Good ball to Matondo, and then Rangers get a bit of luck with the deflection. A massive bit of luck, that's for sure. Here's Bernardo for Celtic, though. Ida takes a touch onto the right foot, shoots and scores! Ida scores! Celtic back in front! Absolutely incredible here! That's the touch of the champions! And Adam Ida comes out to celebrate with the coaching staff. Less than a minute after Rangers equalised, the champions show their wherewithal at Ibrox. It is Rangers 2, Celtic 3, and it is Adam Ida! Well, 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 what incredible, brilliant. Bernardo picks the ball up, all the space in the world to drive forward, but he picks out the telling pass into Adam Ida's feet and he turns, allowed to turn and get a shot through two players and the goalkeeper no chance. Oh, my word. A thriller at Ibrox. And Adam Ida restores the Celtic advantage. An absolutely incredible and possibly pivotal minute of football in the 23-24 season. And has Adam Ida scored the goal that will win Celtic the title? We will find that out in the weeks to come.
And, and he may well have just won this game, Stuart McCall. Yeah, I just give Sterling, what, five minutes ago, a great credit for getting back and getting a block in. He gets back there, unfortunately. He doesn't get the block in this time. Anita hits a smashing shot right in the bottom corner. And, you know, Butland's no chance, really, with the pace of the shot. Well, what it has done, it's just changed the, the, the whole environment inside this stadium because, you know, Rangers have just got the equaliser. You could see the last probably 10 minutes of this game and it would have been really difficult for Celtic, but that goal in itself has incredibly uh, just knocked the stuff out of, out of the atmosphere, you've got to say. It's a brilliant finish from Adam Ida. He has rifled that home low underneath Butland. And Celtic lead 3-2. Well, we're about to go into the 90th minute. I believe eight are getting added on at the end of it. A minimum of eight minutes, so there's still nine to play here. Not done yet. Rangers came off the floor, 2-0 down to 2-2. Suddenly, they're losing again. As Seema picks up, right-hand side of the box. His ball in is cut out. He's still chasing it, though. Breaks back the way, Tavernier, Cantwell in space, in it comes, diving header away by Scales, and out of play for a throw into Rangers on this near side. Cantwell takes short to Tavernier, and then back to Todd Cantwell, trying to work away past Maida, who brings him down, Rangers free kick level with the penalty spot. Another Sally foul by Maida, and yeah. it's in a really dangerous position as well. You know, I was going to say, I think Maida probably should take him off the pitch at this point in time. He's worked hard, but he's given away and he's not lent himself to the game at the moment. Tavernier to take then. Knocking on 90 minutes in from the Rangers. Captain and Goldson again, Rose. He's claiming he's getting a corner, but he's not. It's a goal kick. It's come off him last. It's well wide of the right-hand post. Eight minutes confirmed by the fourth official Willie Collum. Rangers two, Celtic three. In this sense, there might still be a twist in this tail. Absolutely, what a chance. I think it's come off his... He's headed onto his yeah, shoulder again, hasn't scales he? Is done, we've seen it again, Pocky. Scales has done really well. He's gone up and barged against him and he's defended it well, Scales. Well, scales had a wonderful game here in the autumn. He's gone on to be a mainstay across the campaign. As Yang goes long with the ball, Tavernier out in this near side, trying to prevent Maida getting onto it. Tavernier now, he's down along his own goal line or byline. Oh. Play it back, Dowell, he's dinked it into his own box. Picked up by Yang, he's fortunate as Kieran Dowell. Sterling doing a job on the far side, and it's going to be a Rangers ball, but Kieran Dowell chipping the ball across his own penalty area. It's not advisable. Away by Cantwell with the left foot, high up towards halfway. Carter Vickers underneath it. And then headed out for a Rangers throw-in on the far side. One of the eight minutes has come and gone. Celtic leading 3-2. Here's Goldson. Rangers title hopes. Won't be finished today if they lose. They beat Dundee, they're back to within one. But they would have to, you would think, win at Celtic Park. They're going to turn that round. It is Sterling with the chip ball forward. Matondo chasing after it. Johnston's the covering player. Gets the touch, but it's not decisive. Matondo still fighting for it down there. Is he going to win a corner? No. Goal kick Celtic. He came off Matondo last. And Alistair Johnston gets a pat in the back from Tomoki Iwata. Yeah, he didn't well actually because it looked as if he was he was uh, he lost out in that situation, went to ground, and he got himself back just to get the final critical, almost boot on the ball and knock it off. It was off, just his desire, play. Pocky. Wasn't it? it was a desire to get up and win the ball. Tavernier with the cushion header away. It comes off Bernardo. It's going to go out for a Rangers throw in. No Tavernier keeps it in play. First time ball forward. Dessers with a lovely header for Cantwell. Back into the path of Cyril Dessers. Matondo to his left. Cantwell to his right. Goes for Matondo. Doesn't find him, but Cantwell gets on to it. Left hand side of the area. He's got his back to Carter Vickers and the goal. Lays it back onto the 18 yard line for Lundstrom. Now it's Matondo. Chips it towards goal! Tondo! 
Glasgow and it is Rangers 3, Celtic 3, what an afternoon in Glasgow. Liam, I think you were here last week against him, he did exactly the same, cuts inside on his right foot and bends an outstanding ball into the far corner, leaving Hart no chance, what a goal. Yeah, brilliant goal, I'm just looking at it on the big screen up here, goalkeeper had no chance, but don't allow him to come in on his right foot, and I see that too often, uh, you know, people not doing their defensive job properly. And by the way, there's still over four minutes left, plus a little bit on top of that, You're to right. cover the celebrations. This might not be done yet, it's three apiece. Greg Taylor to take, pulls it in fields. Tavernier misses it, knocked back to the six yard line by Maida, but cleared. Scales for the challenge on Dessers. It was a foul, free kick Rangers. I didn't think there was much in it, to be perfectly honest. I thought he got good contact with the ball. But you're right, Liam, there's a lot left in this game yet. Four minutes, probably five minutes. Uh, and, and Rangers on the ascendancy, obviously getting the free kick putting that ball into the Celtic uh, defensive third of the pitch, anything can happen. Uh, it's been an exhilarating game. Even the neutrals, and I know in Scotland the neutrals don't necessarily enjoy this fixture. It doesn't bother them either way. And this has been quite the showpiece, and it's Sterling for Rangers out to Matondo. Again, Philippe Clement, when Rangers equalised there, he wanted his players to stop the celebrations and get on with it. It's been something we've seen all season. The Celtic pick up with Ida. Cantwell slides in. Lundstrom will keep it in play. He goes all the way back to his keeper. And cleared by the Rangers number one with the left foot up towards halfway. Underneath it's Johnston. It is three apiece. And it's a free kick to Celtic for a foul by Dowell on Bernardo. Yeah, all Celtic just need to do is to take the heat out of this now. They don't have to go and score. A draw for them is a brilliant result coming out of Ibrox here. And before the game, of course, they were in the lead at 2-0. They would have probably thought at that point, but we did say at half-time there was a lot to play in this game. So just take the heat out of it. Yeah, they would probably... I think Brendan Rodgers alluded to that in the week that I didn't quite say that a draw would be acceptable, but he said they didn't have to win the game, and... I guess that is the case, but the problem is Rangers go top if they beat Dundee during the week in the game in hand, and it would put some pressure on the champions for the Celtic Park meeting between these two. Bernardo takes the free kick, it's poor, and it sails behind for the goal kick. It stays 3-3. And we've got, I think we're down to just a couple of minutes left. Kerradine can bring us news of a Rangers change, their last one, coming very late on here. Yes, Ian Balligan comes yeah. on for Connor Goldson for Rangers. Strange one at this time of the game. It is, I think he definitely picked up an injury earlier on, but it looks as though he jogged off quite sprightly there. Just under two minutes of the allotted stoppages are left. Flick on by Seema from the long Butland ball. Carter Vickers is facing his own goal with Desert breathing down his neck and he clears. Out for a Rangers throw in on the far side. Sterling level with the edge of the Celtic D by the time he takes this. Bowls it short to Cantwell. Cantwell back to Sterling and then to Suter. Left to the centre circle. Side football back to Leon Balligan, who's just on. Finds Suter. He showed a little bit too much of it to Bernardo, who's going to win a throwing off him on the far side. Real waste of possession by John Suter, that. Yeah, I, I don't know what Bernardo's do, rushing to get going at the ball at this point in time. Just kill it off, kill the game, just keep it possession. Throw and taken forward there to Ida. First time. Shifts it back to Iwata, who finds Out. Taylor. Taylor with the long ball, it's a poor one for Maida though, and it sails behind for the goal kick. Seven of eight minutes have been played here at Ibrox in stoppages. Decision making by Celtic at times has been so poor in the second half, just as if uh, they've, they've gone to sleep. That ball should have been played into the corner for Maeda, go and get a corner, go and get a free kick. Uh, or, or get something in the opposing half. Okay. They end up then allowing Rangers to push them back into their own half. Well, it's difficult to remember Celtic 2-0 up and cruising this match. Somehow they've become embroiled. The scales wins the header. Campbell tries to get onto the re rebound and then Dessers lashes for goal and it's just wide. 
He smashed it with the outside of the right boot and it goes past the right-hand post. And uh, stays Rangers three, Celtic three. We've played the eight minutes now. I'll tell you what, if that was on target, Joe Hart had no chance. What a strike. Just looking at it about two feet wide of his left-hand post for a dramatic finish here. But Celtic, if Celtic get the draw to this, they'll be delighted. They will be delighted. They will be the team that, that uh, probably will take more out of this fixture than what Rangers have done. Really? Yeah. Two, despite being 2-0 yeah, up? Yeah, absolutely. I think it, coming to this, it was always going to be more difficult. That's it. That's it. It's all over. Point apiece. In the end, Celtic with a better team in the first half. Rangers in the second. A warm handshake between Brendan Rodgers and Philippe Clement. Quite the opposite amongst the players, though, who are all coming together there. There are several brawls going on. It's been a classic in this fixture. And tempers are frayed on the pitch, despite the warm embrace between the two managers. Carter Vickers is pointing the finger at Todd Cantwell. And there are other incidents which the officials are keeping their eyes on just now as well. But once the dust settles, it will settle on a six-goal thriller here at Ibrox. Packy thinks Celtic will be pretty happy with that, perhaps given they were under the cost in the second half, given they survived the Cyril Dessers goal, which could have resulted them in taking nothing from this match. But they've tossed away a two-goal lead in the match. Dominant first-half performance. Maida giving them a fortuitous lead inside 22 seconds. Tavernier's attempted challenge ricocheting back off Maidan into the net with Matt O'Reilly's penalty making it 2-0 a handball by Goldson came off his elbow after the cross ball came in that went to the VAR as well and it was 2-0 Celtic at the break and you just didn't see a way back into it for Rangers but they dug in Philippe Clement made the change Seema for right at the break and they managed to find a route back on to terms eventually Tavernier's penalty after a foul on Fabio Silva by Alistair Johnston that too went to the VAR and then Callum McGregor's mistake leading to Abdallah Seema's deflected equaliser to make it 2-2 two -two on 86 late late drama here Adam Eda on 88 less than two minutes later restoring the Celtic lead at 3-2 before a wonderful Rabi Matondo goal the pick of the bunch you have to say similar to the goal he scored against Hibs here last Saturday as he bent it into that far corner from the left-hand side of the box to ensure that Rangers manage a share of the spoils here. They remain a point behind the champions, but crucially, they have a game in hand to come on Wednesday evening in the City of Discovery when they go to Dens to take on Dundee. A win they are, and they are two points clear with just one game to go before the split. And that comeback might just inject all kinds of electricity into them. Celtic go away with a point. Rangers recover to pick up one of their own. It finished here after one of the classics in the old firm fixture. Rangers three, Celtic three. Football from Sp